are gonna get crazy! <laughs> Most everyone's mad. <laughs> people and welcome to Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. And let me tell you, for this episode, it's a real big one. I don't know what the fridge happened, but this week, there have been so many animation news that it was really hard to pick which ones to really go and talk about. So I just want to start things off by saying that I do apologize if there are some news stories that I didn't cover for this episode. Maybe I'll do it for next time, but we will wait and see. But it has gotten so big, though, that I knew I need to go and get someone else. And luckily, I got my good buddy with me to go and work on this episode. So please, folks, welcome back to Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast from Vaulting. Here is Morgan Ledger. Morgan, what's up, dude? Hey, not much. As always, glad to be here back once again. It's kind of a coincidence. The first time around I was here was for a Muppet story. And then when you sent me the articles for what we were covering, I just took one good look and said, oh, I see why. It's always the Henson. It's always the Henson. <laughs> why must it be Henson? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine talking about it. <laughs> hey, I mean, uh, what better person to go and talk about it, you know? Like, I know there's going to be one Henson story, but I mean... Who, who else to go and talk about it? Like, to have an opportunity for me to go and geek out about the Muppets and Jim Henson with someone who will, who can also geek out about uh, Jim Henson and the Muppets. There's a lot of things to geek out over, but that is pretty much the essential core, because there's so... Have you ever heard that phrase, six degrees of Kevin Bacon? Oh, uh, yes, yes. There is more than six degrees of Henson. Oh, yeah. That's the best way to say it when you think about it. That's especially thanks to all the streaming services. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'll give us season four and five, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God, that is true. Oh, I, I almost forgot about that. But, Morgan, uh, before we would go and get things started, though, I just want to say that you are actually here for a pretty historical moment for Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast, because, believe it or not, um, there is actually something that I have right now that I've never had before in the history of this podcast. So, uh, I've always wanted to try this out, and, um, you know, I, I just want to want to try to see and experiment this as, like, the, the first steps in order to expand Animat's Crazy cartoon cast and what uh, i am long... what go on sorry and... go on <laughs> no it's fine um and uh what i am talking about though is a sponsor yes folks this episode is brought to you by never ending bring your stories to life now this is a kickstarter that's happening right now so of course they do need your help in order to get some support and actually bring never ending to life but you guys might be wondering what is never ending in the first place well the best way to go and describe it is that never ending is like um it's like your first animation software. It, it, it's it's like an animation software for beginners. You want to take your first steps into making your own animated characters and your own animated scenes. But of course, uh, this one though has a very specific theming to uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, World of Warcraft, and that kind of uh, medieval fantasy. In fact, I'll read you a little bit from my source on the Kickstarter directly. Uh, where it states that Never Ending is a web-based tool that comes with a library of customizable art. Using Never Ending, you can quickly and easily create custom images of your characters in different poses and a variety of armors, weapons, and items, build scenes with those characters by adding a background, props, creatures, and other characters, and add animated GIFs or, uh, of props and spells, and even pre-programmed animations to turn your scenes into cool animated videos. And not to mention, this already has a software that you can customize your characters in whatever way you want. Like, I have, like, they showed me a little bit of, like, the customization of, like, the character builder. It's a wide variety. You can make 
whatever like Skyrim or World of Warcraft style character you want in this. A and this is all in order to make your own little pieces of uh, animated uh, moments, you know, to build your little animated scenes. And if you go and support them right now, uh, you can go and get like a year subscription, access to beta, and, and so much more. And of course, they do need your help. And uh, as I am recording this right now, uh, what they are asking is for $17,300 in U.S. currency, and they are getting there. Um, there is uh, 11, right now they're up to uh, more than $11,000 so far. And uh, if you are watching this on YouTube or something, I will go and provide a link in the description so that you can go and access to it. Uh, but if you are interested in checking out Never Ending, if you want to learn more, then all you have to do is go to kickstarter.com and search for Never Ending, Bring Your Stories to Life. All right, so now that I got uh, that little sponsorship out of the way, Morgan, I would like to ask you now, are you ready for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? From the words of my favorite role model. <clears throat> If I can do this. <clears throat> Captain Caveman! Bring it. All right, sounds good. I'll take that as a yes. Now, Chatwall, are you ready? Holy crap, it looks like they already are. <laughs> Many of them already are set or prepared. I guess we are all ready. So with that said, it is now time we are going to go and get things started. And to uh, start things off, Morgan, we might as well go and fully lay out our Muppet talk that we've had right at the beginning. So why not we go and start things off with that? So with our first story, let's go ahead and check out the trailer for the upcoming uh, Disney Plus series, Muppets Now. A Disney Plus announcement with Kermit the Frog and Joe from Lingle. Wait, what? Uh, Joe, we're shooting something here to help spread the word about how Muppets the Muppets wanted. are creating an incredible new show for Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Oh my god, and it's shaved. Oh, hi, hi! It's gonna be wild and funny. <laughs> and it's gonna feature some new friends. Friends like... Uh, 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 no details about celebrity guests or content may be proffered at this juncture. Uh, but, Joe, look, I, I was just gonna show everyone... Whoa, 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 over my dead legal briefs. <laughs> Gorgeous, by the way. I wasn't fishing, but I'll take it. What can I say? The Muppets are getting together to make some fun things for Disney Plus. Is that what you want me to tell everyone? Perfect. What do you mean, perfect? And that was the trailer for Muppets Now that's coming to Disney Plus at the end of July. So, Morgan, I would like to know, first of all, from you, um, as a Muppet fan, what are your initial thoughts on what you have seen so far with uh, Muppets Now? Just from that one teaser alone, there are some promising ideas. When you really think about it, before they had... Was it Jason Siegel or John Siegel? Uh, the 2008 Siegel. Muppets. Jason Siegel. Thank you, Jason Siegel. Um, I'll just remember it's a sequel, nothing else. Um, when they did that reboot, they built up to it. They had these little internet minisodes, these little different web channels with Rolf, with Gonzo, with Kermit, and that just slowly trended the idea of where to go with the Muppets. And that was a really clever idea, but now that online videos are, pardon my French, an oversaturated market these days, it seems like doing streaming minisodes is a very good idea, especially for a new channel like this. I'm not against the idea at all. It's a great way to test the waters and see what to do with these characters, where to go for them. And it seems like, from what I've seen in that teaser, there is some endless possibilities. You have the Swedish chef maybe doing some kind of a cooking show. Again, going back to his old days on Muppet Show, and he has a cooking sketch. I mean, that goes wrong. Uh, you have Muppet Labs, which... I guess just judging of this teaser, it looks like they're doing some kind of a Mythbusters thing. Mm -hmm. Like you could like see they're doing outside. the, yeah, like they're doing the Diet Coke and Mentos thing. So that offers some opportunities for more uh, puppet special effects and things like that to make them more moving and realistic. So they're not just 
grounded and moving around and stuff, you actually see like working legs or them jumping in the air, yeah, which think... was rare to see on the Muppet Show when you think about it. Yeah, it is true. But then again, like there is still that classic, like just throwing the Muppets around, like especially with mm. Beaker, like just slammed <laughs> on the wall with the cake. <laughs> Oh, it appears that you cannot make slinkies out of shoes. Isn't that right, Beaker? <laughs> That's right. This myth is definitely busted. <laughs> now then, time for the fireproof jacket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't read Beaker. It's on the inside out, so you'd be nice as a potato. <laughs> um, <laughs> joking aside, I do wish they went a little outside, and the fan in me does want to see a show. It does want to see these half-hour things, but... Uh, when you jump into it too quick, you're not knowing what you're getting into. And I feel that was a major fault of the 2011 show they did for ABC. Uh, 2000. They... Was it 2002? Yeah, 2015. Man, it was... Yeah, 2011 was the uh, Jason Siegel movie. 2015 yes. is the... Uh... This is what I get for staying until 4 a.m. editing a video. Um, <laughs> Moving on from that... Hopefully my knowledge will come back to me. Uh, regardless, uh, when they did the the Office-style mockumentary, I believe that came at a time when some of that was winding down a little bit. So it was a little too late. If that jumped on maybe a year or two after The Office was popular, maybe it would have worked. But I feel like the direction of the going in is safe, and at least they are going to try and channel out and see what they can do with the Muppets, see what they can do in certain areas. And when you really think about it, they already have. Apple Plus, they have the Fraggle Rock reboot. Rock On, those little mini-sodes are in their different caves, some different web shows and stuff. You have Uncle Traveling Matt breaking and entering into someone's home just to explore their house. Um, I say breaking and entering because they'll just say, no, 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 he's just exploring. Yeah, explore. Have you seen Fraggle Rock? <laughs> he's locked himself in a broom closet. <laughs> this guy's incapable of what he can do. But with the way that things have been, jumping from television to streaming, people still watch television, but also when they're on the go, when they're on the road, they got to pull up that app. They got to see what's going on on you know, Netflix and Hulu. So I think this is definitely a good step in the right direction. Where it will go, it truly depends on the success of the show. I'm curious. I'm definitely curious to see what, what this can do. If it's just little five, 15-minute things, okay, fair enough. But if it's like... 30 minutes of like vignettes it's gonna generally surprise me to see what they can do to stitch that together mm -hmm. I, I do see what you mean and honestly even looking at um at the teaser like some of the small elements and uh the fact that you do see like a little variety in there like with the cooking show with swedish chef and uh, uh with the muppet lab segments uh, it does look like they're slowly but surely going back into their roots, but maybe that is kind of like what they are doing nowadays with the Muppets, where they are taking the small steps to find a new direction after the failure of the 2015 series. And I mean, even like, even if uh, like afterwards, like there was a bit of a downfall from there, like they did slowly but surely like get a little bit of relevancy here and there. Like they did um, some live appearances and then uh, there was also uh, a few, like even a few little videos that they've done here and there. Like uh, during the pandemic, there was Kermit where he was just playing his banjo singing uh, Rainbow Connection that did get viral. Mm, that and, was um, lovely. Yeah, that was very nice. Uh, and then there was also uh, not too long ago that special, uh, like the uh, special, you know, like the Disney sing along thing that like all the celebrities are in yes. their houses singing Disney songs. Yes. And in the second one, they started off with uh, the Muppets, where they they were singing their theme song, and many people agree that it was the best part of that special. So there there is indeed some interest in the Muppets that like Disney should be noticing. And with this one, it is starting, uh, like they, they are taking the Muppets and starting a new, like a little bit of an old, but new direction where they're, they're mm. kind of like going back to their roots, but also a bit modernizing it in a way. And also having like all these, uh, different celebrities as part of the Muppet tradition. But also there is one thing I am curious to know about from you, Morgan. Um, what, like, even though we only have like small moments with the guy, uh, what are your thoughts about Joe from legal? When they introduce a new character, it's often a double edged sword because they fit into that time, not, not time frame. They fit into that format, that concept 
what they could do with that character. And time and time again, we've seen have that up and down moments. Like, for example, in the Jim Henson Hour, while well, I have a soft spot for that show, it suffers because a lot of the new characters, you feel like they're trying to fill in the gaps of who was there. Instead of Gonzo, we have Leon instead of... No, it's, instead um, of Fozzie, we have Leon, because Gonzo is one of the more prominent ones. Ex- ex- well, Gonzo's not really, really there all uh, the time when you think about it. I mean, he is, he's, he's kind of sort of there, but he's not doing much. Um, instead of Dr. Uh, Honeydew, we have Digit, which I kind of like, honestly. <laughs> uh, j- just for the... I mean, he has that Christopher Lloyd manicness that I kind of like. <laughs> um, but then you have stuff like uh, Muppets Tonight, where they had Clifford hosting, and... I like Clifford. I think he's fine. I just wish they wrote the character a little better. I can see the direction they were going into back then. They wanted to make this Arsenio Hall type of host who's really just hip and everything, but you can't replace Kermit. Mm -hmm. There's only so much you can do. The whole idea with Kermit is that he's the center. He's the calm one. There's all this chaos around him, and everyone is trying to get together. And with Clifford, I feel like he's a character that was part of the chaos instead of one that could control it, if it makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, Walter from the movies, he was okay. I thought he was fine. I just, there was just something about him that didn't really feel like they're going all out with it. I can't really put my finger on what it is. I know he's a whatnot Muppet. Uh, for those who don't know, that's basically just a blank slate puppet that he can put like eyes and nose and stuff to. You've seen a lot in Sesame Street, like Fat Blue. Um, I don't know. I feel like there was some missed opportunities with that character. With, uh, with with Joe, I feel like they have an interesting idea. I feel like they have someone that's from the outside of the Muppets, so like the reality of the Muppets. Like, oh no, you can't do this. Oh no, you can't do that. And I don't know. It kind of feels like it's a little Sam the Eagle-ish. Because with Sam the Eagle, he's like, you know, we're all patriotic and everything. No weird stuff. And here it's like, no, 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 legalness. We got to keep everything PC. We got to keep everything nice. It's like, looking at it in hindsight, I kind of want to see what they could do with that character. But that's kind of the vibe I'm getting at. I don't hate the character off the bat. There are some funny lines here and there with the way he's telling Kermit, no, you can't show this. No, you can't show that. But, but is there more than just that? That's my question. Yeah, that is true. Like even the way you described it, it does remind me a lot of like when, uh, like Sam the Eagle in the 2015 series because that was yeah. kind of his job uh during that show is like handling the censorship, make sure that it's all good with the executives. Like that that was like part of his job except like now with Joe it's like his, his shtick is more like with with the uh, with uh, the the legal stuff. And, like, in a way, it is pretty similar. And if it is for the purpose of, like, replacing a Muppet with someone else, then it could be a problem. Or if they do the same shtick again and again and again, then it, it could end up getting old. But I, I, I do. But then again, I do also see uh, some of the potential as well. And um, mm. this isn't the only time that they have been using Joe from Legal. Like, there were a few small YouTube videos that they were experimenting and trying him out. Like, I remember there was one video, um, like, it's just the Muppets celebrating Talk Like a Pirate Day, and everybody's, like, you know, talking, you know, like, you know, just doing the Arr- same shtick of, like, talking yeah, like yeah. a pirate. And then Joe, Joe from Legal just pops up, like, copyright infringement. <laughs> copyright infringement is the most common use of piracy. <laughs> and that, that's what, and I will admit, like, that's what really sells it. It's just that one random manic laugh. Mm. Like after the whole thing, and you do get a little bit of that as well. Yeah. In the um, in, in here actually, like just dead uh, legal briefs. <laughs> yeah, like that that little part. So yeah. Uh, like honestly, I'm the god. I'm the god. <laughs> yeah. So there is po- there is potential. So I do hope that they could actually find a way to uh, actually make him work and feel like a unique character. So. In a way, I do see what you get. Uh, I do see what you mean with uh, the factor that introducing a new Muppet can be a bit of a double-edged sword. But hopefully, uh, they won't overuse Joe from Legal, and hopefully, they won't use him for the purpose of like replacing someone else. In a way, this is uh, also there's a 
something that brought up in the some of the chat too. Uh, Smarty Max says, "Ever seen Dark Crystal: Age of Resistance on Netflix?" And that just brought me to an interesting uh, thought process. Mm-hmm. Would we want to see stuff outside the realm of the Muppets more, or stuff within the Muppets? I, I know that. Well, I will say I know that when it comes to Disney, because I want to see both. But yeah, still, Disney Plus is going to be offering both, considering that we have Muppets now happening, and then they're going to have another series called Earth. Uh, is it Earth to Ned? I think. I think it's Earth to Ned. Yeah, Something because they're doing the they're doing like an original alien talk show in a way. Oh, I heard they tried doing that in the 90s, but it didn't work out. It was like a big game show where if you lost, your planet would blow up or something like that. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had, and, they had, it's mentioning alien designs, like, about that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, so we know that is confirmed for Disney+. Plus. So I know they're going to do a little bit of both. Uh, but then again, it's like we are seeing kind of a, a comeback of, like, uh, of the Jim Henson properties, like both the Muppets and and uh, outside of that as well with the dark crystal and labyrinth like we know slowly but surely mm-hmm. a- a- like especially in streaming services where apple tv has fraggle rock uh netflix has uh netflix has the dark crystal please Mama. be season two yep <laughs> yeah please <laughs> when are they gonna announce that uh, but... i've heard a small confirmation but it's not big big i'm still a little iffy about it i'll say that much i've heard I've heard they are going to do it, but it's not, like, a major confirmation. All I can say is, I just want to see Simon Fix and Chamberlain again. That's just so goddamn uncanny. I know, man. Uh, but then you also got Disney with the Muppets, of course, and they'll have Earth to Ned as an original content. Uh, and then you also got Sony at the same time, which they want to do a reboot of uh, Labyrinth. So, like, it's like all of them are coming back, but in terms of original content, it is something that we will have to wait and see, and it is ultimately up to the Jim Henson Company uh, to see what kind of original creations they could come up with with uh, their puppetry. That is true, because everyone has their own IP and how they treat it, and these characters have been around for a long time, ever since the 1950s. Sam and Friends, the coffee commercials. So there is a certain way they talk, a certain way they walk. And it really depends on what the higher ups think about how these characters should act and talk in this kind of modern era. Um, so I'm, I'll give this a shot. I'll see what it's like. But so far, I'd say pretty promising. Yep. And, um, oh, also, one more thing to add is that, uh, of course, you got HBO Max, who has Sesame Street. Sesame Street, yes. Of course. I almost forgot. Like, yeah, I and, forgot and about they're that. Really, and they're really <laughs> using a lot, especially, like, not just the original Sesame Street shows, uh, but also, like, even creating original Sesame Street content, like the Not So Late Show with Elmo. Mm. I still got to see an episode of that. I've been hearing some, hearing some things about it. I can't get it. <laughs> yeah. It's not available. HBO Max ain't available in Canada. And I think I got a confirmation because they say now all the Studio Ghibli films will be in on Netflix in Canada. Ooh. I mean, I don't mind, man. Like, I already got, <laughs> like, worst case scenario, I got all my Blu-ray, so I'm, I'm all set for my Ghibli fix. Indeed. Um... I guess that leaves NBC's app Peacock, but then again, they have the first season of Saturday Night Live and the Gorge Puppets were on that, so hey, everyone's got to cut out a slice. Ah, uh, yes, with the, mu- with the mucking puppets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah, but um, overall, I will say, going back to Muppets now, um, as a Muppet fan myself, I'm definitely excited to see what they got, and hopefully uh, it could definitely pick things up after what we have seen in the last decade, like after the 2011 mm-hmm. Muppets. So um, hopefully we will see a small comeback and it will gain a bit more interest with the Muppets. And I mean, worst case scenario, if things don't go well with that show, then at least we know it will supply a whole lot of memes because that seems to be the best thing that would come out of not just the 2015 <laughs> series, but also with uh, even with Muppets Most Wanted, like there was oh, a yeah. Mo- like yeah, there was a moment when like I you- still see Constantine being used yeah, with, as yeah, a like joke and a quote and everywhere. Yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely. So the Muppets are not dead in the water; they're still there. Yeah, they're still they're still a bit it, relevant. It, it just depends on how the viewers and those out there use them, whether okay. for a joke, whether to talk about it, acknowledge. 
Exactly. So if you are all excited to go, to, uh, if you're all excited to go and check out Muppets Now, just remember that it will be available on Disney Plus on July 31st. So we still got a whole lot of time, a bit more than a month, but um, yeah, pretty soon we'll be able to go see them. Well, then again, it's lucky that my sister has the app, so I'll pretty have a good chance seeing that. I still got to see their documentary series on props. I think it's called prop culture yeah prop culture it's because they have one good. yeah they, they have one in the muppet movie the roger rabbit one has me a little curious because mm -hmm. christopher lloyd talks about doom in that one mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah no it's it's good but it's also a really corny uh series uh, like it's like and, and it's also a little bit repetitive as well because it's like yeah. it, it goes like in the same thing it's like like yeah, like, hey, look, look at this. Look at this. Hey, look, look Ooh, at this. I remember this very well, and, and all that oh, kind of stuff. Oh, it's the bee from the extra. The kids don't sting me. Like, it's made of pipe. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it's it's uh... it, it's pretty much that for like forty five minutes each. Like, it's cool seeing the uh, it's cool seeing the stuff, but then it kind of gets old. But I will say, they do forty five they... minutes. You know. <laughs> But I will say the Muppet episode is actually worth watching because they do put in a really good spin. There is one joke I want to say, but I don't know if I want to spoil it for you or. Um, um I think I'll. I think I'll wait. <laughs> okay, you want to wait? Okay. Please, I. I, okay, I, I would appreciate that. Actually. Okay. All right, you'll see. It's worth it. Anyways, now let us just go and uh, look at ah, the chat. It. Ah. Ah. <laughs> it's just clothes, Morgan. Well, so well, spoilerific about clothes. <laughs> no, you, okay. No, you, you'll see what I mean. But anyways, let's get into the chat wall. And I would like to ask you all, what do you think about the Muppets Now trailer? Are you interested in checking it out? Do you have some concerns? Um, do, do, will, do you think it will bring you back to the Muppets? Will it not? Let me know what you think. All right, so let's see here. I'll go and grab uh, this one. I'm very much looking forward to this, and in my opinion, it seems like it could be the reboot the Muppets need, and I think it could be a nice comeback after uh, the ABC series failed. However, I am still very disappointed that we did not get Muppets Live Another Day because it seems like it had a lot of potential, especially with people behind Once Upon a Time were supposed to work on it. Oh, the Josh Gad show! I never got the full detail. Uh, it's supposed to be a, a follow-up to Muppets Take Manhattan? Yeah. That's as far as I remember. Yeah, it, from what I recall, it, it, it's a little bit similar to, like, it, it, it felt like they were they already did this before, but the plot is like, the Muppets have to get back together in order to rescue Rolf or something like that, and um, it's supposed to be, it, it's supposed to be a little bit of a satire of shows like Stranger Things, where it's kind of satirizing the nostalgia element, in a sense. Uh, all right. If the Muppets was just about that, the the Jason Segel movie, it was, if it was just about that, getting together and saving Rolf, I can see that working. But because this is coming after that, after that, let's get the band together and do mm -hmm. this. I don't think it could have worked as well. Maybe with the satiring kind of stuff. Heck, I want to see that that next Muppet movie script, but now it can't be made because there's so many dated references. Gonzo becoming the new Batman and stuff like that. And then the end, you had the villain going to Sesame Street to try and tear those Muppets up. Um, uh, I don't know. Just, just hearing from the concept alone, it just, I don't think it would have worked as well. Maybe for the jokes, but for the story, not so much. Yeah. Like there's a part of me that, that does feel like it's probably for the best anyways. Uh, let's see now. This sounds like an, uh, this sounds like an amazing, you can't go wrong with the Muppets, although it's a shame that Disney fired Steve Whitmire from playing Kermit the Frog. I know that Jim Henson, the Jim Henson family was not happy about that, but it's cool that I heard from Paul Williams, the guy who got Rainbow Connection, that he wrote one song for this new Muppet series. Uh, yeah, but then again, like, I, I don't mind, like, I I've pretty much gotten used to, uh, uh, I believe it's Matt Vogel, right? That's the new Kermit. Like, I've got used to his yes. performance. And, I mean, yes. honestly, it, it does feel like a nice welcome. Uh, Matt Vogel's okay. I mean, no one can beat Jim. No one can. Even I try to do it, I can't really get that yeah. girl. Um, th th there's no other. Steve Whitmire, he was good. I grew up with him, and I'm connected to that voice quite a bit. But... 
you know, there, there's only so many times you can play a character. There's only so many times someone can actually channel that voice. And if you're going to pass it down to someone, at least pass it down to someone who has the knowledge and the respect and the wisdom of that character. I think with Matt Vogel, he's okay. I don't have any huge, huge qualms. He took over the role for Big Bird, and he's doing fine. Yeah, that is true. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not Carol Spinney. I mean, you can't top Carol Spinney, but... Hey, there's more than one Fred Flintstone. There's more than one person voicing Scooby-Doo. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good, too. I'm good, too. Like, it takes time to adjust to, like, the new voice. But still, I think, like, he's got the he, he got the character down pat, like, the personality mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, I mean, heck, uh, D David Rutman does a great cookie monster. I mean, that's just seamless. Oh, all right. That's nice. Uh, Muppets Now seems fun. In the advertising, it says unscripted, and that seems super interesting. I kind of want to see Kermit and the Muppets do a whose line is it anyway type show. That would be awesome. <laughs> Just doing Let's Make a Day with Piggy as the guest. Oh, and you have God. Gonzo and Fuzzy Bear. Uncle Deadly is Bachelor number three. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, that that would like do it do an imp like a Muppet yeah. improv show. That that is not a bad idea actually. Well, they had that too. It was called Puppet Up, but it was more for an adult audience. Ah, uh, yeah, that yeah, good point. I good point. saw clips of that. It was amusing. Um, there are some sketches I remember looking back to going, oh yeah, that was actually kind of funny the way they did it. But with improv, the <sighs> with improv, you're not trying to be funny. You're trying to be unfunny. But it's with puppets, so hey, it can be funny. So uh, with this unscripted element, it kind of makes you wonder how they're going to do that. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm happy for more Muppet content in the world. The fact that they haven't thought about inserting Sam the Eagle in America today uh, and show how to be patriotic <laughs> while acknowledging America's faults. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I just gave you a great episode, Disney. Maybe I'll check this out when it comes out on Disney+. Plus. Uh, is the Mandalorian channel for me and nothing else? Ah. <laughs> All right, yeah, that that could be an interesting uh, episode to bring. Sam they've they, they've given me five jokes about Sam the Eagle's view of today's America, and I can't even say four of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's one, there is one, and it's really really easy. You are all weirdos. Ugh. Yeah, or you know Ugh. what would be it? Or you know what would be interesting? Like um. Just make a re uh, just Sam the Eagle making a reaction video of childish Gambinos. This is America. <laughs> that can have some potential right there. It does. Uh, it really does. All right, I'll read. Have, one have Sam the Eagle watch music videos. Oh, oh. this is appalling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, someone. Oh, I don't know if you saw this, Morgan. It just like just a quick re read to th to to mention. Like someone mentions, uh, we need more Uncle De Deadly narrating the Haunted Mansion since the last D23 Expo. Oh, that is yes. true. Yes. <laughs> I love Uncle Deadly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He's He's been, um, he, he's, de yeah, he's definitely an underrated mm -hmm. Muppet. I'll read one I'll more say this, comment. What? I'll, I'll, I'll say one quick thing about Deadly. What they did with the character as of recent, I'm fine with it. Oh, yeah. No, he, yeah, yeah, he's got yeah. a, like, Probably, yeah. if anything, like the best thing we've got in recent years from the Muppets is a massive upgrade from uh, Uncle Deadly. Mm. They made him a little more flamboyant as of late. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. You I mean you can see how theatrical he was in the old show, so it fits. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I mean that that's that's his point. He's like supposed to be like the Phantom of the Muppet Show. So exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Oh. I really like the 2011 Muppet movie with Jason Segel and Amy Adams, and the sequel Muppets Most Wanted. And even the fifteen Muppets. Uh oh. Um. Oh wait. And the fit. Oh, and the twenty fifteen Muppets was an unfortunate bomb. So I'm pretty excited for this new show coming on Disney Plus. And as Morgan said, it's a double edged sword when it comes to introducing a new Muppet character. That said, I hope to see what they do with the concept. Well, then again, Pepe the Prawn Shrimp. He used to be a sponsor for Long John Silver, and then they made him a prominent character. Yeah, that is. And true. that that had its fans. <laughs> I don't. I don't have. I don't hate. I don't hate Pepe at all. Uh, he has his moments once in a while. I really like Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I think he's I think he's all right. Uh, he's a hell of a personality. I, I could say that. 
All right, though, um, now it is time that we're going to go and jump on our next story, and we got another trailer. This time we're going to be a lot more animated with this one, and it's actually quite a fascinating trailer because this has been something we have heard for a while, and uh, what makes this one exciting for animation fans is the fact that this is going to be Glenn Keane's movie. Oh, I love Glenn Keane. Oh, yes. And th yeah, technically, I think this is going to be his feature directorial debut even. Ooh. So with that said, let us go ahead and check out the trailer for the upcoming Netflix movie Over the Moon. Fair warning. If I riff, I'm sorry. That's what I do once in a while. Again. Tell me, Mama. A beautiful Mama. woman and a handsome man were in love. But she accidentally took a magic potion and floated away, leaving her true love behind. Now she waits for him on the moon. Mm. Oh, the poor lady, that goddess. So lonely up there on the moon. Oh, God, it's being bunny. Of her one true love. Holy the church! Oh, ah. It's just a silly myth. It's not a silly myth. It's real. She's on the moon right now, waiting for her true love. Right, Papa? Uh. He used to believe in her. If Papa could only believe again. It's you and me, Bungie. We're the last true believers. We're gonna prove she's real. I have a superpower. No barriers! Papa, he ran into a wall. That was Over the Moon, the collaboration with Netflix and Pearl Studio. And may I say, the possible sequel to Avatar The Last Airbender for those of you, for those <laughs> who feel so sorry about Sokka. Uh... <laughs> so, Morgan, uh, how do you feel about the trailer that we have just seen? Oh, I gotta be nice. I gotta be nice. <laughs> I gotta be nice in the best way I can, because... <laughs> oh, I... It's a mix of emotions. Because, <laughs> one, this is Glenn Keane, the guy who animated The Beast, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He animated The Beast, oh, Aladdin, um, he animated Radigan, of course, um, mm. Tarzan, I believe, Pocahontas. Like, yes. He, he's done a lot. Yeah, if I remember correctly, was it him that did the transformation scene of Beauty and the Beast? Because I remember there's a story on the Platinum Edition where one guy had to animate that scene for a short amount of time. And it was just so nuts for him because they had to figure out a human form for the Beast. I can't remember if that was Glenn Keane or someone else. Um, That is a good question. I would have to double check on that, actually. All right. I, I know it's on the Platinum Edition. I remember that mm -hmm. uh, story very well. Just seeing that pencil test and the 
or print version. I, I tear it up. I tear up at that every single time. I really do. Um, but for this, if I had kids, I'd be okay showing to them. I'd be fine. It definitely has some uh, tropes here for family viewing and kid viewings. It has a good message to it about believing and such. Um, some of it is a little hit and miss with the humor, but I'm not going to hold it against that. Uh, I do like some of the concepts and ideas, like her befriending the rabbit, and that gets her interest into going to the moon after hearing the tales and the stories that her folks told her. Um, I like the animation. It definitely feels something from a DreamWorks property, but a well-done DreamWorks property. Well, uh, well I will it, say... It, it, uh, I, I, I know you have a different uh, view, and I'm curious. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It's just, um, I just want to clarify on what you just said, that it looks like a polished DreamWorks film. Well, that's where Pearl Studios comes in, because if you don't know, Pearl, Scoo Pearl Studios was originally built as Oriental DreamWorks. This is the studio that actually did uh, Kung Fu Panda 3 and recently Abominable, but because they kind of DreamWorks and the studio kind of separated, uh, separated their ways. Now Pearl Studios is their own independent company. So that's why it does have that polished look and it does have that feel and why some people could say that in terms of the animation, there might be some similarities with, uh, Abominable. I, I figured, I figured there was something about, thanks for clearing, uh, clarifying that up. Um, I think it has a good premise. I think it has a good idea. I'm a little nervous about the execution, but I think it's worth seeing this movie just for the payoff, what they're building up to, this whole other universe. And I'm a little curious about what that is going to be like. I feel like they shouldn't have shown clips of that. I think it should have just ended with the, the ship being tagged on and getting beamed up and then just end the trailer from there, just let the curiosity flow, but it's like, yeah, they gotta sell this movie somehow in some way. Um, I really don't know. I feel like this could be a good movie or an adequate one. There's only so much you can judge from a small trailer like this, but from what I've seen, there are aspects of it that do make me a little curious to see it. So if that leaves a little bit of an optimism tinge at best, just at best, I'll, I'll definitely see it, but right now I'm a little optimistically concerned because this could go either way. Because remember The Little Prince? Oh, right. That yeah, because they had that thing, uh, and it's all about conformity. So this is going in a different direction. This is fine. It's going into Asian culture, Asian mythology, and I love stuff like that. I love folklore. I love myths and fairy tales so this is easily right up my alley and if i saw this when i was five or six i'd probably get really hooked to it i'd probably really enjoy it it already has a good color scheme especially with the two-dimensional animation which looks very beautiful it's like something out of you know that scene in Mulong, you know a woman we're fighting for and they're daydreaming and see all those like oh, little yes that's true that's, that's what it reminds me of but it's put to a better use here um there's potential there's there's good potential. I'll leave it there. Mm -hmm. um, as for me, I will say that um, I am actually pretty optimistic for this one. Now, I do agree where what seems to be lacking the most is the story in a sense where with the way that they are presenting it, yeah, it is kind of like the, the predictable story of like that even though it is based around folklore, it is the tale of like, I'm going to go find out if it's real. Wow, it is real. And, and that kind of stuff. So it's not necessarily all that great. So I do understand where you're coming from uh, there. But I will say this is one of those cases where the stuff that they are showing, like the elements that are good, they are great. Like number one, mm. the animation is fantastic. That's what I really like the most about the animation. And plus the fact that you do see a little bit of a variety of stuff that they are presenting. Like um, like even with the, the regular computer animation, the way that they've made things so highly detailed and really emphasizing on modern Chinese culture and even like the little bit of like hand-drawn animation that we've seen. So like we, we know that with Glenn Keen on board, uh, they are able to produce some very fine looking animation. And honestly, if there's one thing I would completely disagree with you on is actually the ending bit, because that's what I love about this trailer so much, because everything, everything about it 
feels so much like build up. Like it's mm. all building up to the big moment that she would go to the moon and like it's one thing that she actually does build a rocket that actually can go up to the moon. <laughs> it does have a Calvin and Hobbes vibe to it, don't you think? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the, the spaceman spiff stuff. Yeah, that, like there is that aspect, but honestly, I feel like after you saw the title of the movie, then there's like then there's that little moment it's like, "Oh, by the way, here's the real thing that's going to be coming up." Yes, and this that's when they shoot brain after all. <laughs> Yeah, and then the the stuff that they have shown is like it's almost like an entirely different movie and still those visuals are absolutely gorgeous but now in a different way. So it's like some like they're just teasing you with something to really look forward to. So I I believe this is the kind of movie where like technically the main sell would be the animation and how well crafted it is but in terms of story that would be something that would that would be like a bit more of a wait and see and maybe this movie might not necessarily turn out to be that great but i could definitely see that there is a lot of effort that was put into it and that like especially with the animation so that's what's making me curious about over the moon and hope like and honestly as someone who really does admire the works of uh, glenn keen uh like it really does have me curious to know um how this movie is going to turn out so uh who knows? The, the eye the eye candy factor is there it mm-hmm. really really is there the story itself i'm a little uncertain we'll see where it goes yeah, I, I think it's more like a wait and see, but it definitely has my attention, especially with the animation. So, mm. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I am pretty optimistic. Uh, now, of course, we don't necessarily have a release date, I believe. They didn't necessarily say when this is going to be coming out. It just said fall 2020. Uh, did it? Oh, yes. It says yeah, at the end. Tw- okay, so fall 2020. So at least it is going to be this year, so... Uh, at least we we won't wait too too long, but eh, we'll 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 see like what's uh, what's gonna be happening with that. All right. So uh, with that said, I'd like to go into the chat wall, and it's time. What the fridge? Holy crap! Oh. I, <laughs> Morgan, I think I just discovered uh, James is here actually. Oh yes, he is. He just popped in. <laughs> I was trailer. just I was just like, <laughs> hi, Mitude. What the fridge? Hey, James. Hey, you James. You made me. Just in the shadows here. <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, um, uh, now I would like to know from the chat wall, um, how do you? What do you think about this trailer in particular for Over the Moon? Do you guys think this is um, this is something worth watching? Do you have any concerns? Are you excited for this? Let me know what you all think here. Uh, let's see now. Uh, to quote Mickey, hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. This looks great. It does look a bit like DreamWorks, but more polished. The animation is really nice, especially with the hand-drawn parts. I'm not sure about the story, though, since this looks more like style over substance. But hey, it seems Pearl Studios is going to enter the animation ring pretty soon. Well, I mean, they technically have. It's just uh, Mm. DreamWorks, like, kind of helped push them in. Like, this is going to be their first time, like on like almost on their own in a way it makes me wonder if there's going to be any competition at the oscars for best animated feature because they had klaus nominated for best animated feature so i'm a little curious to see what they're going to do with this one that is true well i mean it's either going to be this like if netflix is going to have at least one representation it's going to be like this and the willoughby's so yeah we'll, we'll see we'll, we'll see how it goes but then again like that's not going to be for a long time they did announce not long ago that they are delaying it until april i believe mm. so yeah there is that uh let's see now uh yeah this is a glenn key movie all right while the humor isn't too great the animation looks stupendous and gives off plenty of the same energy of, of abominable I like the premise. I'm a sucker for animated musicals, unless it's unless it's based on Titanic. So I'm definitely jazzed <laughs> up for it. But considering Pearl Studios' involvement, I just hope the movie doesn't get into trouble showing the nine dash line. Oh yeah, there was that controversy. Ugh. Nah, it's a it's a long tr- it's a long story. It's like um, it, it, apparently there was a map shown in Abominable where there was the uh, nine dash line showing uh, like this part of the ocean that's... is ours. <laughs> 
so yeah they, yeah they got a little bit in trouble for that but then again like <laughs> what do you yeah what do you expect what do you expect when china makes a movie gloating about themselves uh, uh let's see look at isle of dogs that's all i'm saying uh, yeah well isle of yeah. dogs is japan though i don't know where i'm going with it just move on <laughs> I don't care anymore. My brain is still trying to function. <laughs> hey, don't worry. The less the less is function the be- the less is functioning the better. That's the point of this podcast. I know. I know. <laughs> That's how I run this show, so at least there's <laughs> that. <laughs> Anyways, at first I thought that they would tell a story about the loss of a parent and how to handle it. But then the ending of the trailer happens and suddenly the movie didn't just go 180. It just destroyed the first third of the story and threw it in the garbage dump. So right now, I don't know what to think about this movie except great animation. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Because they did hint out of the fact that the mother died somewhere. Yeah. Like, like the mother is dead. So like instead of that element, uh, they would go and move on like suddenly they would just go like all right to the moon now so yeah i guess you can put (laughs) come on grommet so of course yeah of course (laughs) a lot of people are making that comparison yeah i yeah i do see grand day out um a a lot but honestly for me like in my mind honestly like i was thinking more of despicable me actually (laughs) we will go and try to (laughs) We will go and make two. We will go and make sure true love happens to the moon. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, no, it does bring uh. up a pretty good point, and I guess again we will have to wait and see with uh, how they will handle that. But I will say already that is true that we can put this uh, movie in the pile of uh, animated dead mom movies. <laughs> so what was up with that kid doing the Naruto run into the wall? I have. I don't it know. just. <laughs> just, what was I, up with that? Because comedy? <laughs> comedy show, comedy show. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, this trailer really caught my attention. The 2D animation at the beginning of the trailer was pretty cool to see, and I'm interested to see what the rest of the story is like. And yes, there are plenty of rabbit on the moon jokes uh, I can make with the relations to Sailor Moon and even the brutals from Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, but when but we'd be here all day if I'd make them. Yeah, that is true. So I guess there's a point to the rabbit on this. Uh, Anyways, uh, I wish we had a... The the kid was running to Area 51. (laughs) Kid was there! (laughs) Terry! He was the one leading the whole path! Yes! (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) There's a wall! Don't worry, we can go through it! (laughs) We have our little tiny kid to do this. I practice at home. I know what I'm doing. He is six million dollar bionicle kid. Yes. We just turn the switch on by his ear, and he can bulldoze or anything. So what's with the frog then? Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. No. Yeah. That that's way too many degrees of yeah, reference. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Let's see. I wish we had a clearer idea on what this movie is about since it seems to be going on a lot of different directions with the trailer. uh, uh, Starting by saying something about the mother drinking some kind of potion and disappearing uh, to the main character wanting to go to the moon. It doesn't feel like it has a focus, but I will say that the animation looks gorgeous. Yeah, maybe that is kind of like the source of the problem with all this. Like even with what you might have is the fact that it, it, it is true that it does lack a lot of focus. It does. There's dead mother. There's kid befriending animals that might lead to some fest, something fantastical, or maybe kid they talk or believe. don't talk when they go to another world, like Coco, for example. Um, there's them going to the moon to try and prove the mythical story presented exists. There's them going to the moon and seeing this beautiful, wacky land. Sorry, beautiful... <laughs> wacky land. <laughs> I... I, I... I didn't want to say Wacky Land, but I kind of slipped a little there. Um, this beautiful, gorgeous-looking other world that could be very, very amazing and great to look at from a gorgeous animation standpoint. There's a lot they're putting into this. It's like they're just throwing it right at you. And it's like, what do you expect? Uh, I don't know what to expect, but the visuals look pretty nice. Yeah. I'll go and read one more comment before we go and move on. Uh, mm. This looks fantastic. I'm happy that 
after all the crap that Chinese Americans have gone through this year, please vote, vote that racist out, uh, they're getting a movie that presents their culture in a positive light that the Chinese are not evil and actually will come out this year as opposed to Mulan. Well, then again, Mulan is still being released, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, seeing movie about different cultures will forever be a good thing. Also, it's Glenn Keane, so I'm interested in it, um, even if it turns out to be bad. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. At least we got some people looking forward to it. So once again, if you are interested in checking out this movie with Over the Moon, then all you have to do is wait until fall of 2020 to see the film's release exclusively on Netflix. If you don't have it, subscribe now. Exactly. All right, so going on to our next story, we're going to go a little bit into a somber note, unfortunately. And mm. uh, this is a little bit of an in-memorial section because this actually has to do with uh, two particular deaths that has happened this week. Uh, yeah. And uh, the, the, the coincidence in this is the fact that this is actually coming from two directors, actually, who have unfortunately passed away due to cancer. But I think it is... Uh, a good thing to go and have a moment to go and talk about a bit of their legacy and the impact that they have left in their respective industry. So first and foremost, let's go and talk about Joel Schumacher. So this week, Joel Schumacher has passed away at the age of 80 after a year-long battle with cancer. Joel Schumacher has a, a wide range of different films that he has worked on that some were great and some were not so great. Um, these would go, and I'll read from my source here on The Wrap, where they include St. Elmo's Fire, The Client, A Time to Kill, Falling Down, 8 Millimeters, The Lost Boys, Tigerland, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, Phone Booth, The Fan of the Opera, and The Number 23. He has also been noted to be the man who has uh, a talent for spotting young, young actors and turn them into the A-list celebrities that we know today. People including Colin Farrell, Keith, uh, Colin Farrell, Keith Sutherland, and Matthew McConaughey. And uh, often collaborating on movies, uh, like often working with people like Nicole Kidman, Jim Carrey, Nicolas Cage, along with those actors like Colin Farrell and Keith Sutherland. Uh, but movies aren't the only things that he has done, though. Uh, he actually started out as a screenwriter, where he worked uh, in the 70s doing scripts uh, for films such as Sparkle, Car Wash, and even The Wiz, before going into his directorial debut in 1981 with The Incredible Shrinking Woman. Uh, mm. he, has, he has also... Uh, oh, hold on a sec. Uh, hold still, Morgan. I just want to show you, like, you actually do have The Incredible Shrinking Woman. Thank uh, God Shout Factory released this. Oh, yeah. Uh, on top of that, he has also directed several different things outside of movies, including two episodes of House of Cards and even the music videos of Kiss from a Rose by Seal and The End is the Beginning is the End by the Smashing Pumpkins. But at the same time, more recently, though, uh, there was the passing of an animation veteran, Kelly Asbury. Kelly Asbury this week, uh, similarly to Joel Schumacher, has passed away uh, after a long battle with cancer, but unfortunately much younger at the age of 60. Ke uh, Kelly Asbury is noted to be the director of five particular animated features, including Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron, Shrek 2, Gnomeo and Juliet, Smurfs the Lost Village, and Ugly Dolls. Kelly Asbury has been uh, working in, in the animation industry for quite a long time, where he actually started uh, as an in-betweener for The Black Cauldron, and since then mm. has climbed up the ranks in the industry and worked on various of projects, including being one of the writers of the 1991 classic Beauty and the Beast. But also, he has been noted to be a very prominent um uh, a very pro a very prominent story artist where many of his credits actually include some of the biggest and some of the most beloved animated features of all time or in recent years. Uh, these would include Toy Story, Kung Fu Panda, Madagascar, Escape to Africa, Wreck-It Ralph, and Frozen. So that's pretty much the big thing with these two people. So Morgan, do you, uh, which one do you want to start with? Uh, Kelly Asbury or Joel Schumacher? I have a great way of condensing this very perfectly. Okay. Um, this is interesting because 
here's someone that worked in live action productions, uh, Joel Schumacher, and we have someone from the animation side of things, and they both go out with the same kind of terminal illness. This is very particularly interesting. It's like Mark Twain going out with Haley's Comet. There's just something very surreal and weird, interesting about that. Uh, with, with Joel, it was a big sting. It was a really... Well, let me ask you this. How did you feel when you found out about Kelly's passing? Um, honestly, a bit shocked, actually, because I, so is... I, I am familiar with uh, Kelly Asbury's works and uh, quite familiar with his name, like, passed around, mm -hmm. especially for uh, working on the DreamWorks films, especially, like, the director of Spirit and uh, Shrek 2. And vice versa with uh, Joel Schumacher. Uh, but the minute I found out about Joel's passing, I just read the headline. I was like, oh, oh, no, it's really old age. I didn't know about his battle with cancer. That was the big that was the big twist. I'm like, oh, it's horrible. Oh, that's how he went out. Oh, 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 ooh. ooh, he was a fighter to the end. Um, it's interesting because we have two different directors that have a very unique filmography. They've worked on more than just being directors. They worked behind the scenes. Uh, Joel used to be a fashion designer, but then he moved into filmmaking, which is kind of interesting. And it does explain his eye candy ability for making movies from a staging point of view. And there are some that are worth checking out uh, if you haven't seen all of his stuff, like Falling Down, which is really, really intense, but really good. Um, and, you know, Incredible Shingy Woman. With Kelly, it's interesting because he, he worked on Shrek 2. He did some writing credits here and there. Um, so that does not say to me he went out on that kind of note. It, it says to me, yes, he did good stuff. He actually did contribute to some really good things. Anybody, and I mean anyone, who's worked on the Black Cauldron and moved up from there, really does show how over time how stronger they get you can move on from a bad movie you mm -hmm. can it's just a matter of jumping onto the right project and these two people have shown that it is possible that you can fight through that no matter what you're linked to that's going to affect your career you can achieve from that you can move on and do some great things um I'm not a real big fan with uh, Kelly's films Shrek 2 is okay I didn't insanely fall in love with it. I, I thought it was fine. I, I saw the drive-ins. Give me some credit. Uh, Spirit, that has great animation. Gorgeous animation. Um, I, I just really don't know what to say. It's just such a strange time moment to have someone from uh, the Hollywood industry and the animation industry just go out at the same time. It's just so really coincidental, but they've had a great legacy. They've had a good history, and that is the important thing to hang on to, that they may be gone, but they're still here, and they still will be remembered. Mm -hmm. and, and I will say, like, if I may take a moment to speak about Joel Schumacher's part, is that, you know, honestly, I do feel, you know, I kind of do feel bad with, with, um, with not just the way Joel Schumacher went out, but kind of like a lot of the treatment that he has gotten. And yeah. I will confess that, like, part of me also, like, kind of jumped into that, that train a little bit, but... It is true that with Joel Schumacher, I mean, yeah, like he doesn't hit his mark all the time, but you got to give him credit that he is a vet, like he's one of the very few, very stylized directors. And it's because of like, like from his fashion background where you could see that he has, like you said, Morgan, he has that ability mm. to deliver some great eye candy and to deliver like a unique vision that you can tell that it's none other than from Joel Schumacher. And, like, you, you got to give him credit. Like, at least he could try to go and experiment to see, like, what kind of visual styles that can work out. And, like, at least he he went and, like, went into a wide variety. Like, not many actors, hmm. not, not many directors can say that they had the, like, they had the range in their filmography. Like, going from, like, superhero films and then dramas and then all, all that kind that of is... stuff. That is... That, that is true. Few actually do have that means to jump from one thing to the next and be versatile. And the only person I can think of, honestly, from the music industry is Paul Williams. He's the kind of person that can write a glam rock song or a nice sweet ballad, and you wouldn't even know off the fly it was Paul Williams. Uh, with, 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 um, with Schumacher, it's interesting because I feel like he's the only person that really was down to earth. When you listen to his audio commentaries, you see him in an interview, 
he just says things as they are. He doesn't have like a huge ego or anything. He just wants to make something entertain, something for people to delight. And when you really dig deep into the Batman Forever stuff, it's interesting because he did have something dark and psychological, but all these other people had their hands on it going, no, 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 Batman Returns happened. We can't have it like this. Even the deleted scenes, you have that whole subplot with the Red Book Journal and Bruce thinking that it's his fault that his parents got killed. Uh, but like I said before, they've had a good filmography. They do have good movies, bad movies they worked on. So no matter what, they're still going to be appreciated and remembered. Yeah. And, and the same can be said with, uh, Kelly Asbury where, yeah, like there, are, there, are, there have been some duds that he had, like, I didn't really care all that much for the lost village. And I mean, it, it sucks that he kinda... see that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eh, I mean, it's, uh, it's a movie. It's a movie. Uh, so, someone already spoiled me the ending, then carrying the little powder of Smurfette with the little... Oh, yeah. the Oh, yeah, of uh... course. No, it's not powder. It's the... No, it's the Pokemon the first movie ending. That's the thing. Uh... They ripped... Off, they fully ripped off Pokemon uh... the first movie with that thing. Uh... Oh... <laughs> It's almost like, yeah. It, it's almost shameless the way they did it. Even no, but um, that and also like it's unfortunate that he went like now he officially went off on a low note with ugly dolls. So that was a big yeah. Disappointment. Uh, there there have been some greats I've seen where they did go off on a pretty unfortunate note, but they've had a range of talent. They're very yeah. versatile, and that's the and important that's true. thing. It's not like they it's not like they had a track record of negativity no they want to make a difference in the movie field and that's the important thing about them mm -hmm. and especially like um but like despite what asbury has done like i know that he has done some great works as well not just with his contribution in story like as a story artist but also like at, as a director even like when he started out very strong at dreamworks like with spirit and shrek 2 and i really actually do enjoy those movies so mm. it, it, it is unfortunate and like even when i see people talking about kelly asbury they always mention that he was he's one of those guys that uh people often highly view like as one of those people that made it in the industry like the kind that people wish they could have a career that is similar to that person and kelly asbury was definitely one of them Mm. I kind of do wonder if Ugly Dolls had some kind of studio interference the more I think about it. Because just thinking about it from my point of view, there has to be some kind of history with that film. There, Unless there it was all... It, 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 can't, it can't be all Kelly. There has to be some extra hand. No, 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 of course. I mean, like... No, there, are... There's always, there's always going to be that executive that says, no, make it more like this, make it more like that. So if you're going to blame the director, don't blame the director. Look into it, please. And I'm, I'm not everybody out there watching this. Yeah, and, and I mean, like, with, um, well, I mean, with Ugly Dolls, like, it's true, there were plenty of hands that were on it, and especially mm. uh, a lot of Chinese hands that were on it. Like, that that's one mm. notable thing about it, is that there were definitely a lot of uh, different Chinese studios and different Chinese companies uh, that were working on it as, as well. And plus the fact that it is a movie based on a popular established toy line so yeah yeah i i wouldn't i don't think i would completely blame kelly asbury on like neither would i happened. no yeah but because okay. when you're a director you're shepherding something you know someone's gonna get involved at some point yeah and it is true that when it comes to like with the with the kind of hate that the these people have gotten like more often than not it's not their fault and i would even say the same thing about joel schumacher like i know a lot of people mention like how notorious he is for what he did with uh batman for Bat batman forever batman forever and batman, batman and robin, and robin. Batman. but I'll, I'll just say this i know it might sound a little bit too extreme or uh maybe i'm just exaggerating this thing but I feel like nowadays, like, the hate that Joel Schumacher has gotten, like, mainly because of Batman and Robin, I would blame the nostalgia critic for it. Because, let's yeah, be honest, his, like, that, I that mean, his so most pop yeah, like, one of his most popular reviews he's ever done is the Batman and Robin review. And mm -hmm. not to mention the fact that it's the one where it, got, like, it kind of originated the Bat credit card joke. Credit card joke and, uh... Speaking of which, what do you think of uh, Phantom of the Opera? Eh, <laughs> eh, you know, 
<laughs> oh boy, coming from a fam from coming from a family that is obsessed with Fam Phantom of the Opera, uh, I I think it's uh, I, I think it's probably best to just stick with the uh sta with, with the stage on this one. With the movie, I mean, like I, I I will say this. I mean, like again, the visuals, like he nailed it, and there's a lot of great ideas that he has done. Like there are some great concepts, some great ideas, and some great visuals. I don't blame Joel Schumacher though. I blame more some of the actors, really. I I did hear Angeloid Weber had his hands all over this one. <laughs> oh yeah, then you got yeah. It, yeah that you, explains you, Gerald Butler and everything else. It's like no, mine understand mine. Okay, well, yeah. I'll just do my job. Do my yeah, job. then there's there's Andrew, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that's again again I don't blame I don't really blame Joel for that one. Oh, it it's a guilty pleasure. I'm just going to say that much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but you're right. Uh, the 25th anniversary. Uh, that was a good Phantom, by the way. Oh, yeah. Who, who they got to play the Phantom for that one? Holy mackerel. Oh, yeah. No, like, trust me. I think a lot of it, for both me and my family, it's mainly because, like, we are so spoiled with uh, the stage adaptations that we have seen uh especially my sister like she is the most obsessive of, of, of us all especially the fact that <laughs> she's seen the broadway show several times uh the tours several times whenever they come by or whenever they're near us or and even like um even e even in london she managed to get to see it wow so <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, overall, I would say that it is unfortunate to see these two uh, directors go, and uh, like there, yeah, there there have been some not so great times with the uh, with these actors, but um, at the same time, well, not these actors. I mean, not so great <laughs> moments with these directors, but they've also had some very good moments, and uh, it's safe to say that they have definitely left their mark in the in the industry. And there are, and yeah. I would even go as far and say that there are some things that are uh pretty admirable for them so overall um yeah definitely may they rest in peace and hopefully their legacy uh will move on uh any words morgan no i think uh that's all you need to say mm -hmm. ah, all right so uh, with that said, I'd like to go into the chat wall and I would like to ask you guys, do you have any words that you would like to say regarding either Joel Schumacher or Kelly Asbury? Uh, also, for both directors, do you have any fond memories of them? Like any like favorite movies that uh, you remember watching from them? Let, let me know what you have to say. Uh, let's see now. Um, I was so shocked when I first heard they both passed away from cancer. Joel has been hated when he made Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Uh, and Kelly made my favorite childhood movie, Shrek 2. As much as people bashed Joel over Batman, he at, le at least he apologized and his hard work. And uh, Kelly, he had made a not good movie and at least he did his best. And I wish them the best of luck uh, in the better place. Thank you for all the hard work you made. Rest in peace. Okay. I got a good one here for my friend uh, Cody Klusner. By the way, hi Klusner. Oh, Cody's uh, here too? Oh. oh yeah, the movie venturer. I watched Joel's Batman films as a kid, but as I got older, his other works like Flatliners or A Time to Kill, um, he could pull off thought-provoking ideas or know how to hit you in the fields. That's true, especially considering falling down 8 millimeter. Mm -hmm, true. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kelly was actually one of the three directors of Shrek 2. Uh this could be an example of different directors either adding their own elements or taking turns uh, directing a scene. In terms of setting a vision in Shrek 2, which element uh, which element of Shrek 2 was Kelly in charge of? P.S. My condolences to the family and friends of both Joel and Kenny. Um, hmm. That's a good question. I, I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Like, I, I know there were several directors of Shrek 2, but I don't know which one specifically that he would be in charge of. I don't know. I'd probably have to go and do a bit more research on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, it really sucks when good people die, even if they made a movie you didn't like. Joel and Kelly had made great movies like Falling Down, which is now more like a documentary on white America, and Shrek 2. Uh, I hear that they were very professional and good people. <clears throat> and uh, good people. 
I think the reason why Joel was so hated was because he was gay, and I feel bad for joking about uh, when I was younger for Batman and Robin. I hope they both rest in peace, and we remember them uh, as not good filmmakers, but as good people. Okay, that's nice. Uh, let's see now. He may not have left the same impact on society as Wooly Reitherman or Richard Williams, but Kelly has certainly been through a whole lot. Condolences go out to his wife, his stepsons, his niece, and his sister. Also, Joel Schumacher has been a hit and miss director. He did a lot of good stuff, such as A Time to Kill and Lost Boys, and his Batman movies are a bit of a guilty pleasure. Uh, rest hmm. in peace to both of them. Uh, I'll go and read uh, one more before we jump into the next story. Uh, Certainly. Well, there goes two more people, and honestly, I feel more for Kelly. I'm not saying Joel doesn't deserve respect for what he has done. In fact, all past animators and Hollywood people need some respect. Just that I'm more familiar with Kelly Asbury's stuff, although uh, his death was more shocking. I didn't think he could have gone the distance a bit more, uh, like starting off with a Disney dud and ending off with a Trolls ripoff. Uh, I think it was the Black Cauldron, kind of ironic in that sense. Yeah. If it is assuring to everyone, in August, uh, me and a friend of mine are going to be reviewing Batman Forever oh. as sort of uh, a condolence, because there's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'll spoil this much. We don't hate it, but we saw it at the right time. Okay. That's nice, man. That's nice. All well, right. So, so with our next story now... I don't know if this would be a positive note or I, I don't know. Like, uh, well, it'll be a little bit more of an uphill compared to the last one we talked about. But um, it will be very interesting to talk about. Mm. And, um, well, recently we have seen a lot more movie delays, though. Uh, in fact, they have just announced. Oh, yep, they I have... know which one. Go on. Yep. Okay, there you go. Now you got the idea. Um, it took me a second. Like, is it this one? No, no, you're saving that little cherry for last. You oh, little W. Dude, I specialize in grand <laughs> finales, man. I specialize uh... in that. Anyways, um, now we have seen a lot of delays, like with either Mulan or with uh, Tenet, where they were supposed to be released next month, but now they have been pushed back to August. However... There is one movie, on the other hand, that decided to go a little way back. And not just going way back, but not even being out in theaters. And what I'm talking about is regarding SpongeBob. Yes, it has been announced... Oh, that... uh, excuse me. It has been <laughs> announced that for the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run, that Viacom CBS will no longer be releasing that in theaters. Instead, they will be putting it out exclusively on premium video on demand, and then right afterwards, they will go and put it on their streaming service, CBS All Access. But the big catch of all this, and the one that shocked people the most, is the fact that it got pushed back where it was supposed to be released on August 7th, but now it is going to be released in 2021. And by the way, on a side note, with CBS All Access, it seems that now Viacom CBS has a major plan with that streaming service, where now they really want to take it seriously and make it a serious competitor where it can actually fight off HBO Max, Disney Plus, and Netflix, where not- And Peacock. Yeah, and Peacock as well. Yep, and... can't forget that one. <laughs> I don't know, I always do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, anyways, uh, the thing is with, uh, with this is that apparently for early 2021, they really want to go and reboot that streaming service to become a serious competitor. So not only would they go and put up uh, Sponge on the Run, but at the same time, they also stated they're going to go and release every single episode of SpongeBob SquarePants onto the streaming service. And I do have a couple of quotes to go and read uh, in my source here on Variety. The first one will be from Mark Debevoice, uh, the Chief Digital Officer at Viacom CBS and also the President and CDO of Viacom CBS Digital, stating, We are thrilled to have the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run, a premier first-run movie from, our, from one of Viacom CBS's biggest brands, join CBS All Access's expanded slate of franchises content from across Viacom CBS. This launch will be uh, perfectly timed with our continued expansion and planned rebranding of the service in early 2021 as we welcome Spongebob and the gang from Bikini Bottom to the service in the biggest way possible. We also got another quote 
coming from, uh, where is it? Yes, from Ramsey Nato, the v executive VP of Nickelodeon Animation Production and Development, saying, we're incredibly happy to give kids and families a much-deserved lift in any way we can. And the PVOD release of the new SpongeBob theatrical and putting all the seasons of the TV series on CBS All Access are two of the best ways I could think of to get immersed in the optimism and joy that this terrific character represents. So that's pretty much the big thing is that it will be released on premium video on demand in early 2021 and then straight afterwards it would be for CBS All Access as part of the big reboot of the streaming service. So Morgan, wh what do you think about that one? There's one image that clearly sums up everything. I just got this earlier. Uh, a friend of mine is playing uh, Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Uh, and it's a good thing he sent this in the group because this is a perfect representation. I just Oh God, that is, that is actually horrifying. That is horrifying <laughs> because I just I don't know if you I don't know if you saw that, but his like Patrick's eyes are like glowing. Like we don't even see the black dot. It's just like full on glowing white. <laughs> gaping patrick um uh okay so you want to give this a bigger push you want to give this app a bigger platform so it competes everybody else fine um are you sure spongebob is the right ip for this kind of thing well it is popular it's still being discussed it's being talked about from my point of view, um, I don't have any qualms with that cartoon, but I think it's getting to that age where it's kind of winding down a little bit, like The Simpsons, where it's just there. I don't particularly hate it. I don't particularly have a huge fondness for it like I did years ago. I still think the first hundred episodes or so are still gems. There's still some good stuff in there. The C Skill Crane episode, the Band Geeks one. But in this, well, then again, there are some new ones they've done that weren't that bad like the halloween stop motion episode the legend of boo kini bottom um i do question of all the things to go with to say yes we're gonna do this we're gonna be serious could spongebob really be that item that ip that really is gonna put cbs out there on the mark when there's so many others to choose from that's really my biggest thing pushing the movie back until that time not really new. I mean, it's a shocker. It's a curious shocker, considering how many times that film's been pushed back, how many times they've changed the name from It's a Wonderful Sponge to changing the plot and what it was supposed to be. Okay, movies go through that. Fine. Uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force Film Colon for Theaters had a different storyline. That got changed. Um, yes, it's true. But to me, it sounds like they really want to take this seriously. They really want to make All Access really, really big. Fine. But in terms of choosing the right IP to kick things off, I do question if SpongeBob is the perfect choice. Especially with what we've talked about earlier with the Muppets and others. Mm -hmm. That's the only biggest curiosity for me. Okay, you're pushing this one back, fine. But you want to do this big launch with that. Is SpongeBob still relevant? And that's the big yes or no question that I can't find myself answering too well, well without but, angering millions of others. Yeah, but I will say this. I mean, we are talk like w one thing I would like to ask you. I think a, a much bigger question would be considering that we are talking about Viacom CBS. This is not just like uh, this is not just CBS's uh, streaming service, but this is also with um this is like paramount's streaming service as yeah. another way to look at it so my biggest question would really be considering that it is from those companies what else like is there really any other brands that they got like some people have brought up star trek okay maybe. star trek twilight zone twin peaks i know they're connected to cbs video which releases some stuff here and there it's a pretty scattered brain iffy plot of what they could go with especially the 60 bajillion ncis spinoffs they have mm -hmm. yeah and, and, and that that that's my point is that okay yeah the, like they do have other content of course but do they have one that is as big or even bigger than spongebob that they could really go and heavily promote 
for CBS All Access. Like, in mm-hmm. a way, the way that I see it, it looks like what they want to do with SpongeBob is that this is like SpongeBob will be for CBS All Access to what Simpsons is to Disney Plus. Disney Plus, yeah. Like, to make that a major seller that they got one of the biggest animated series ever onto this specific platform and use that as a major selling point to get people into CBS All Access. Which, by the way, I don't know if they have... Uh, do, 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 do you know like what would be the price of CBS All Access? Or? Not off the top of my head, per se. I think it's like maybe in the 10s or fourteen ninety nine. I could be right or wrong. A month? I, have, I believe so. I know there are some... Pl- <laughs> okay, hear me out. I know certain streaming platforms have certain memberships and certain things. I have Hulu, and... For free ads, it's like eight ninety nine a month. Okay, fine. Bite the bullet. I'm fine there. Um, Shutters like five dollars a month, which is pretty reasonable. I got Joe Bob Briggs and Creep Show, so that's fine. In regards to this, it just makes me wonder who's next at this point. Because with the way things have been, it seems like as if there's so many going straight to video on demand or just an exclusive streaming item for streaming apps so it just makes me wonder what's the next one to go and i see a lot of people saying new mutants and i wonder that too but it's like what is the next big thing that's going to be used for this kind of ordeal because we've seen that happen quite a lot as of recent like the next uh movie that will go exclusively to streaming or stuff yes because i can't imagine a big blockbuster like mulan or a tenant going straight to yeah. like amazon prime or anything it seems like this has been um been test around as of recent for this past couple of months now here's the true testament we have something that's well known in the public does it have a big following maybe maybe um things are not going so well with the theaters okay Let's use it for something else that we have that we could tap in at the moment. Streaming is a big thing because people at home, people are kind of sort of on the go, but not really. They're not going to movie theaters. Okay, so now we're the next big line of entertainment. The internet, the online system. Let's see what we can do with this. Is this next big thing? Um, It just makes me wonder what the result's going to be. Is it going to really pay off that well, or is it just going to be... They they've pushed back this movie so much. It was gonna come out. Le- was it was it gonna come out last year? No, or is that just, just my magic? Twi- it's just twice. Like twice. originally, it's su- <laughs> it, it, originally it was supposed to be May twenty second. Like Thank technically, you. it was supposed to be a month ago that it was already mm. out. Then, and then it was August. Then they did and now August, it's been going and straight to. But one thing Wait. I will say, though, this is a pretty unique case when it comes to Sponge on the Run. Because you could definitely tell, like, I've seen the past reports that Viacom CBS were so eager to do this move. Like, they were very much tempted, especially after seeing the success that both Trolls World Tour and Scoob did. Scoob, you, yeah. Like, you could, like, they, like, they were hesitant at first, and they just wanted to move it like to another date so that they can still have it be in theaters so that they could still go and like, you know, stay in that area. But you could tell that like they were very much open to it. They were considering it and it was almost inevitable to the point where like now with the current situation with the pandemic, where there are some areas that have gotten worse, especially in the Mm. States. Now it has left with, now it has left um, Viacom with no option that, might as well go and put it out on the streaming service. Now, there are some people, I will say, that they did state that it's like, oh, there's no reason for this to be delayed (laughs) to 2021. But, you know, honestly, I will admit that there might be other reasons as well. Like, even though some people could say that technically the movie is finished, but there might be other factors to why it got delayed to 2021 because we don't know what's happening behind the scenes. And I wouldn't be surprised if it would be the fact that there might be some technical issues or uh, some production issues where they need to refix some elements in the story. Or it could be a case like with Minions Rise of Gru, where the reason why they're delaying it to 2021 is mainly because they need to do some post-production stuff that they cannot do because of this pandemic. Oh, that's why. I'm yeah, that... wondering what the story behind that was. Yeah, with yeah, with Rise of Gru is mainly because of mm. uh, post-production issues that they just cannot... Uh, like they cannot have access to so that's why they gotta (laughs) 
delay it further. And considering that with uh, with Minions, it's from Illumination, and their animation yep. house is in France, and during the heat of the pandemic, like, they, they had it hard, so it's like, okay, they cannot do jack all with the movie and have to... <laughs> they have to go and wait a bit. So that could... So that I can... That, that I wouldn't be surprised if it would be the case with Sponge on the Run as well is because they need access to uh, uh, post-production elements that they cannot have, like maybe mm. some additional scores and stuff like that. You know what's kind of sad, though? Oh. I keep walking to retail stores and grocery stores, and every time I turn a corner, I see either a Lunchable or SpongeBob cereal, and I'm just thinking to myself, hey, I can't wait to... Oh, yeah, they delayed that. I see why. They already ate the advertising check and just bring it out because it's scheduled for this kind of time period. <laughs> the, the Minion stuff, oh, my goodness. They got, like, Kinder Eggs and things like that. So it's like, oh, you're promoting something that's due next year. Um, yeah. Let's see how much we can pump into this advertising by the time this gets released. Uh, yeah, I, I do wonder... I do wonder if there is something going on behind the scenes with that uh, sponge on the run. Because it seems like as if they had to change the movie quite a lot. Because the first time I heard the story, it was going to be something like It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. It's where a he wonderful goes to the sponge, future. yeah. Yeah, and then it turned into Sponge on the Run where he's trying to fi find Gary. So I do wonder if there is something going on. If that's the case, it's truly understandable. But if they're just holding this off until this revamp for CB all, CBS All Access... There's really not much I can say, except I'm curious to see what the reaction will be. It's something I just can't pinpoint, because there's so many factors on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is true. So, I, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe that could... Like, I'm just doing speculations. Mm. I could be wrong. Yeah. But um, um, it would definitely explain the, uh, the delay to 2021. Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't know how... I don't know, like, what would be my reaction to see what they're going to do with... Uh, cbs all access like now paramount wants to go and pitch in because like now it feels like almost all the major studios want to have their own uh streaming service and now the only ones who don't have one yet are either lionsgate and sony and those two and say what you will about those two but they are not ready at all for their own streaming mm. service the way I see it, they can either... There, there's two options on the table for the... Oh, actually, someone just corrected us. See, Sony has Crackle. I actually forgot about Crackle. Is it uh, really, but is it really, uh, like, the Sony streaming service? Not se? exactly. There's a lot of Sony-branded stuff on there, mainly movies and television. I know... I know Tubi, T-U-B-I, has some things they're getting from other studios, too, but it's, like, the lower, lower kind of stuff. Sometimes something of higher, like the Pink Panther movies, that's just about it. The good ones, not the Steve Martin ones. Um, the way I see it, those studios have two options. They can either package up their movies and do some kind of a syndication for streaming apps. The same thing they would television. They just make, like, this little package of films and TV, sell it to the streaming apps, and say, here, you get this for X amount of dollars. It's nothing new. They've done it for television. Or they can We're just go We're going back out. to cable, folks. <laughs> or they can just eat their check, make this streaming app, streaming app and say, hey, check what we got to offer. We got Spider-Man and all this sort of stuff. And it does make me wonder what the future is going to be like in this case. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say theaters are going to be dead. There's we, we still have the drive-ins. They're doing pretty well. So obviously that is not going to go away anytime soon. But it, I'm just a little curious to see what's going to be like for streaming apps. It seems like they're kind of becoming the next big thing. That's because of the timing at this point. But then again, you wouldn't want to buy Disney Plus for Artemis Fowl. <laughs> no, that is true. No, oh, God. no. Ugh, yeah, I've heard the horrors. Yeah, I've heard I don't, the I don't horrors. Need, I don't need Josh Gad Hagrid right now. <laughs> I want you as a snowman, not a creepy giant John <laughs> Beetlejuice creature. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, what what I'm expecting honestly is that we are in the middle of like what people say. I believe it is a war. It is a streaming war. So at the end, I'm I'm expecting we're gonna see some that will leave. Like there there like there's gonna be plenty of those that are not gonna be forever. Definitely from my experience, I've seen that happen too quite a lot. The big home video era. Yeah. 19, when 1985 happened. A, there was a lot of direct-to-video disinterest. 
a lot of like independent companies like movie entertainment just really crashed and burned because there just wasn't any interest. And then DVD happened, but uh, uh, nothing else I can say except I. We all know Taco Bell is going to be the winner of this one. Oh, sorry, wrong franchise wars. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Of course, uh, no, they'll find a way. No. They'll find a way to win the streaming wars. They will. They certainly will. Oh uh, yeah, or Pizza Hut, depending on where where you're watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh look, I can get a stuffed crust with no ads. Rate ninety nine. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I'm in Britain. This actually costs more. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but man. yeah um so it looks like you might have to make some change of plans and if you actually do want to watch sponge on the run then you'll have to wait uh, wait a little bit in early 2021 so with that said i would like to go into the chat wall and i would like to ask you all how do you feel about Sponge on the Runs' new release date and the fact that it's going premium video on demand and on CBS All Access instead of theaters? Um, are you, you know, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? How do you feel about this? Let me know what you think. Okay. Uh, let's see. You know, I can perfectly understand why they would want to put the movie on video on demand, but pardon my French here, but pour, uh, pourquoi... Dans les chaussettes des euh, dans la chaussette des baisses volantes euh, sur un graissin doivent-ils le reporter à 2021? <laughs> 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 it's just an absolutely uh... dumb move that I for the life of me will never understand. I'll still watch it, but I'm just hoping it doesn't become uh, the animated M New Mutants. I'd say uh, kid-friendly New Mutants, but that exists is called My Spy. No, 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 no. If you want an actual animated New Mutants, that's called Animal Crackers. Like that is oh. the animated New Mutants. Oh, not since Hoodwink 2 has there been so much pushback. Do you remember what happened? They they had a promo with Burger King, and as they were doing the court case, they actually released the Burger King promo. Yeah. So there were all these toys for a movie that wasn't in theaters. Yes, that is true. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. No, the kid version of the Mutants is called Generation X. It came and went. <laughs> yep, exactly. It was uh, a Fox TV movie. <laughs> uh tartar sauce this was the only film i wanted to see in cinema during the summer and now it's locked in north america for an unsuspected amount of time still no uk release for scoob and another quote from digital spy says paramount's future plans for international distribution does not include a theatrical release barnacles fish paste oh really oh boy paramount Oof. is going in a Yikes. well i mean technically like Technically, there is uh, that Top Gun movie in Christmas. I mean, they got something. Oh, yeah, Maverick. Yeah, like, I, I know they got something. It's not like they're going to completely give up on theatrical distributions. No, no, they, they can't give up on it. They can? Oh, they can't, you mean. Okay, sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, sorry, I, I heard know? that wrong. What was that I had dyslexia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh... I, I just... No, it's just my brain... My, my brain doesn't register well words. <laughs> uh, Unfortunately, no. And... I gotta look slow. Uh... Yes, uh, oh my gosh, would you look at that. Uh, more movie delays, yay! But are we surprised? Good luck to Viacom with this sponge. And by the way, we are starting to have some trends here. The streaming service war, movie delays... And thanks to Trolls World Tour, uh, the VOD trend uh, cause apparently popcorn and candy at the stores uh, is now cheaper. <laughs> Wait, they're causing what? popcorn and candy to be cheaper? How? How? No, I've not seen that on my end. Maybe at the retail store I work at, but not anywhere else. Yeah, really. I How mean, is that? They're infamously expensive. That would be a miracle. Uh... But <laughs> that, that would be if movie theaters are so desperate to lower the cost of their popcorn and candy. You know, at the start of the summer, no, actually, no. When At the start of the CVD thing, I did see something my local theater did. They're not doing it now, which is kind of a bummer. They actually had a drive through snack bar, which is kind of cool. So they had, like, popcorn and pretzels and slushies and stuff for you know, a certain amount of price and stuff. 
it's a shame they're not doing it, but it's like this is kind of what's come down to. We're missing the theatrical experience. Yeah. Our only savior is the drive-in theaters now and streaming services. Yeah, even in here, like now our cinema, believe it or not, our cinemas actually do offer Uber Eats. Mm. Like if you want to legit grab popcorn and stay at home, you can just do that. Wow. And you know, someone brought up something pretty interesting too it looks like we're we don't have that many animated movies coming out this year we're just down to in theaters i mean we're just down to connected and soul by pixar wasn't there another one that disney had uh, a dragon movie yeah ryan the last dragon thank you that was supposed to be released this november but when they moved soul they also uh, they also moved maya to march i figured that's what happened yeah um let's see what else do we have here uh dude you have no idea how much of a disappointment this is to me uh this was my most anticipated film this year even more than scoob uh not now to the point uh not to the point big uh being better compared to how bad that film went i want to go into a rant but i'll be patient and it's not fully lost since uh they rehydrate uh, since uh, there is rehydrate and uh, being honest, you can run in the kelp forest. Seriously, gra- uh, gra- uh, the graphics looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. Like, I guess in the meantime, mm-hmm. SpongeBob fans do have uh, rehydrated. That is true. Yeah, that, that's true. A lot of the games have been coming out. And apparently someone corrected us. It's uh, Raya and the Last Dragon, not Maya and the Last Dragon. No, Raya, yeah. I said Raya. Yeah, Raya. It, it, I thought I heard Maya. Maybe, uh, maybe it's just my ears or something. Yeah, probably. I, I'm just saying that so no one in the comments when this gets uploaded to YouTube goes, Oh, dare you misspell that? Uh, f- Dear internet. I'm like... So- I am uh, under a rock and I'm a starfish. <laughs> oh, trust me. I'm like... I, I'm like t- completely <laughs> nullified. I'm completely numb uh, by those uh, comments. I get, I get too many of those. It's like, I don't care, man. Come on. <laughs> response. I am aware. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm sad to see this movie move to VOD, but I can see why they they had to do it. But another thing is that it gives me concern is what if the studios decided to push into drive-in movie theaters instead of indoor movie theaters? Because I see people go through uh, go through do, to do that nowadays during the pandemic. I mean, they got to adapt. Like, that's the big thing yeah. about this. Yeah. And I'll read uh, one more before we jump into the uh, next one. Uh, Let's see. uh, Where can we go with this? Okay. I think AMC is triggered after hearing this news, and I am wondering why why delaying it to 2021. And I'm thinking that Seoul could get delayed to June 2021 instead of November because I think uh, that the coronavirus could get worse during flu season and Mulan is being released on the same week when the actress said her support to the police brutality and she hasn't made an apology since August of last year and it mm. could flop and nobody's going to see it and I wish the best of luck for Paramount and Viacom CBS. I forgot about that. And I think that's going to be the reason. And I think that could be the reason why it could end up, um, why Mulan could end up becoming a hit because it has been a while, honestly. And because of that, yeah. And people are pretty antsy on going back to the movie theaters. So, yeah. And they've heard a lot of the changes and some of the things. So I thought that was the big tipping point, but no, the fact that we're slowly getting back into society and everything, it's like, well, you can have that, huge fraction of those who are going to be very very concerned i know there are people that don't want to go on like vacations or anything until this whole thing dies down so oh boy (laughs) i'll rent mulan from the library dot 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 for free (laughs) yeah there is that option as well (laughs) free (laughs) not here in the enterprise system Um... oh Okay, so I think with that said, it is now time we are going to jump into the grand finale. And this is a real big one. Holy Stand crap. back, folks. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. Now, this was actually something that I did talk about a couple of weeks ago. And to be honest, I never thought that they would do it. Like, I went on explaining for a while about why I think it wouldn't be possible that Disney wouldn't go and do it, that they're not in a financial situation to immediately do so. And I thought it was never going to happen anyways. But I've heard Lola- jokes about this. I've heard many, many jokes, one I'm dying to share. And lo and behold, 
It looks like it's gonna happen. I will admit I was completely wrong. And it looks like the re-theme is gonna happen. Yes, folks, Disney has officially announced that they are completely re-theming Splash Mountain into a Princess and the Frog ride. Now, they're not <laughs> gonna go and completely tear it down and make something new. The ride, itself, the ride itself will be remain intact. It's just that now, the characters that were from the controversial 1946 film Song of the South are no longer going to be there, and instead they will be replaced with the characters from The Princess and the Frog, including Tiana, Louis, Naveen, uh, Mama Odie, and many, many more. In fact, they even mentioned uh, not only showing us this beautiful uh, concept art of what the ride is going to look like, but they even mentioned a little bit of a plot line of what the ride will be. And it's not going to oh, be like... Oh, a... we've got a plot this year, have we? Yes, actually. And it's not going to be like a retelling of the movie, but it's actually going to be like a direct sequel, where it states, reading from my source here on uh, Disney Park blog... It states, we pick up the story after the final kiss and join Princess Tiana and Louis on a mad on a musical adventure featuring some powerful music from the film as they prepare their first ever Mardi Gras performance. So this is going to have a lot more of a Mardi Gras theme. And hmm. on top of that, we even have a little bit of a quote here from the voice of Princess Tiana herself, Anika Noni Rose, as she states, It is really exciting to know that Princess Tiana's presence in both Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom will finally be fully realized. As passionate as I am about what we have created, I know the fans are going to be over the moon. The Imagineers are giving us the Princess and the Frog Mardi Gras celebration we've been waiting for, and I'm here for it. And by the way, beforehand, uh, before I pass it on to you, Morgan, there are a of lot of clarifications that I would like to go and make. Now, first of all, of course, I've already stated that technically this is a re-theming. It's not like completely tearing down the ride and making something new. This is just going to be the exact same ride, except now it's going to be themed to the princess and the frog. Uh, mm -hmm. But also at the same time, um, even though they are going to be doing it both at Disneyland and at the Magic Kingdom, there is Tokyo Disneyland, however, where they are not going to do the changes, and that will be remained uh, intact with its, um, with its Song of the South theme. So that's just uh, one thing I would like to mention that it's only in the American parks that they are going to rethink that. And also, that's fine. and also the biggest thing that I would like to point out. The big important thing before everyone would go and make their comments on stuff like this is the first paragraph that they have mentioned in this saying, today we are thrilled to share this first glimpse of a project Imagineers have been working on since last year. So this is pretty much to say that no, the recent Black Lives Matter movement does not have any influence whatsoever on the decision of changing Splash Mountain into a Princess and the Frog ride. So that's a major emphasis that I would like to go on that. So Morgan, um, you have ri ridden uh, Splash Mountain, right? Uh, or do you have yes. any thoughts? On yeah, okay. So Yes, I thankfully I have. You're in good hands. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. So uh... I would like to know your thoughts on this one couple of quick things. Uh, got an interesting comment here. Because I know this guy goes to the South once in a while. Mardi Gras theme? Does that mean they'll throw beads and flesh nipples? <laughs> <laughs> you know the story! You I know mean, it is, it is Splash Mountain. I mean, they do have that reputation. <laughs> I, know <laughs> I know, man. I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> no! Oh my god. That would be a bigger excuse to hide those. Ooh, it's Mardi Gras theme. Woomp. No. Um I just offended some mothers of America. <laughs> yeah, I remember writing Splash Mountain. I believe it was my second trip to Disney, because there was one where I went down there. When my mother and stepdad were on their honeymoon, and then there was a second time he went there when my sister was doing some kind of a dance performance. Uh, apparently, her dance group that she was with would take a trip to Disney. They would perform on stage, and then afterwards, we would have the option to visit the parks and do all sorts of things. And that was when I had that chance to actually go on Splash Mountain with my sister. Can, 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 I do have a bit of a question. 
I, yes. I, I, this might sound crazy, but I might know what you're talking about. Is, is, is it one of those like cheerleading competitions? No, it's it, oh, okay. it, they just go down there before them on stage and do the thing. That's just about it. It's okay. No, because yeah, I, just I, because I, I remember there were a few times when I would go to Disney and we would coincidentally be there at the same time as there would be like these like young cheerleading competitions. Not like like mm-hmm. not 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 like cheerleaders that like you you all know like in the high school <laughs> yes, football teams. I, yes, I mean no. like I, I mean like for oh, like no, the no, young no. like ten year olds like elementary school school kids. No, nah, this is like maybe teenage years. Me okay. and her were six years apart. Um, so I, I do remember writing Splash Mountain. I do have vague memories here and there. I know certain parts of the ride, such as going up and going down, and the the template of the story and how that carries on through the ride as you're going up the mountain and stuff. I don't remember anything that really caught me off guard as being offensive. Maybe it's just me, and it's been... 84 years since I rode that thing, but of course, no one laughs at that Titanic joke because it's been overplayed. Um, <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is I don't recall anything really that negative about it. Maybe it's just me and it's been years since I've been on that thing. There's YouTube videos of people filming the ride and stuff. You can see it through there. Sorry, Judy. I don't... I think this is more of a case of them just saying we got to go into the more current materials that we have. We got to push this and take that out because when you think about it, when people go to ride Splash Mountain, they have they either have no idea that's connected to Song of the South or they do have an idea it's connected to Song of the South and they're questioning exactly what they did with it because usually when it comes to theme parks, they connect a certain ride to a certain movie and try to emulate the excitement and the kind of feeling it was when watching said movie star tours for example that's star tours muppet vision 3d that has the jokiness but the playfulness of the muppets uh twilight zone tower terror i think i can say enough there um but sometimes when you have like a new property or a new franchise and you just want to push that one you either a build a whole new thing or just do a whole new paint job over something that exists. And that is the case with something like the back to the future ride, which I'm really fucking upset about Uh, coming from someone who loves back to the future. At least I wrote on that twice before they took that down. Um, That's now the Simpsons ride. Cause of course the Simpsons are popular then and vice versa. There's only so long you can go for until Either A, a sponsor pulls out, which is the case of certain Epcot rides. Mm -hmm. Like Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, Captain EO. Um, I could list the many things that are not in Epcot anymore because the sponsors were gone or some other reason. Body Wars or uh, what's that one? The the Cranium one? Cranium Command, yeah. Thank you, Cranium Command. Um, I I don't really see this as a case. It's timing. That's really what it is. This announcement is at a point where they're just bringing it out when all this is going on, where they're asking for a change of culture, a change of time, a change of society. If this came out a year or a year or two ago, it would have been fine. It would have been okay. But I think the reason why it's getting so much of a spotlight examination is because of the timing on this announcement. Mm -hmm. Uh, Similar situation with, God forbid... Tom and Jerry and Willy Wonka. They announced that around the time of Gene Wilder's death. And it's just poor timing. It's when you're delivering this news. You have something on the back burner, something you want to say, and then this happens and it affects it. So um, now in regards to the change itself, it's interesting. I want to see where they can go with this. Just hearing from the concept, seeing some of the artwork, I'm a little intrigued. They're going to keep the track there. They're just going to replace some of the scenes, the animatronics. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. Are they going to have Dr. Vasily back? That'd be kind of cool, having like all little shadow creatures no, along the walls and stuff. Dude, I would have I so much say, fun with that. No, I will say, that's the one thing people are heavily demanding. Like, when you go up the big that's hill, like, before the giant drop, like, people are demanding. They want to go up hearing, like, are you ready? Do, do, do. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be honest, and this is where it's going to cause a little bit of a split. I'm not a big fan of Princess and the Frog. I don't hate the movie, please. Hear me out, hear me out. It's a well-animated film. I like the stuff with Tiana and Prince Naveen as the frog. I like that angle. I like the buddy comedy stuff. I like the gator and his 
yet the the gator and is wanting to be human, the Trump and everything. Where it loses me is the complexity of the villain and his connection to everything else because he has a deal with the shadow creature he's trying to take over the town and all this other stuff he's trying to keep the Naveen's servant posing as the prince but he'd like a drop of blood and stuff that's where it gets a little too much i feel like that's more deserving for a grand dramatic epic kind of story i feel like this is more of like a buddy comedy fairy tale kind of thing sort of like emperor's new groove but if it wasn't too chuck jones ish and over the top and comedic more like a straight up romance movie and if it played more into that general direction with the jazz culture i think it would have been fine it's a good movie it's a good movie it's nice that the hand-drawn film i just wish it was a little less complex um this has really no negative bearing. I'm curious to see where it could go, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've already put a little bit of uh, some of my piece beforehand. And um, I-, I will say, the the thing is, you, you did n- nail the you-, you did hit the nail on the head regarding like the element of timing, especially the fact that when a couple of weeks ago, this was exactly what people were demanding, that they were asking for a re-theme of Splash Mountain, and many were, ac- were actually asking... Uh, for for it to be rethemed to the princess and the frog, and meanwhile Disney was just on the side going, um, "Funny you mentioned that because uh, <laughs> what we got." <laughs> But uh... it, yeah, but it is true. Like for me, it's the same thing. Like I did ride Splash Mountain, and I was a bit unaware of like, like well, I, I was a little bit aware. But uh, the the thing is, is that I, I what I am aware though is the way that Disney is trying to really like change history, like re re. re history what what, i'm trying to find the right word somehow it escapes me not retheme history but like change history or uh, decorate it or soften the blow no 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 no, no. they're changing like full-on changing it revamping it retooling it uh re oh crap it's re something Crap. Resetting, reconsideration, rewrite, yeah, re- rewrite history, rewrite, rewrite. Like that, yeah. They're trying to rewrite history with uh, Song of the South, and uh, like I and I will say, like the ride itself, I really enjoyed it. it. It's a lot of fun. I think it is one of Disney's best rides that they got there, especially like following the journey of Br'er Rabbit and the gang. And let's be honest, it's kind of like the only piece of media that's currently up and running, that's keeping the stories of Uncle uh, Remus alive. Ah, 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 ah. That's uh, where you're wrong, my friend. That's where you're wrong. Hi. Hey. Uh, uh, come down here, you. Ah, there we go. I hold in my hand this special edition version of Alice in Wonderland. Okay. And in previous releases, the Masterpiece Edition, this one in general, which is in the middle, and the Blu-ray Edition, there is the one-hour promotional presentation one hour in wonderland which does have one of the brer rabbit tales from song of the south so in a way a tiny tiny reese's pieces fraction of that movie is on dvd when you think of i mean it's not really song of the south it has just one. one just so just that is the closest we will get just the closest mm-hmm. and that's only because it was part of that promo piece so they have to put it in there. They, they well, they could have just edited it out, but okay, good for them. They kept it in, and well, until future releases. Um, that's made its way on home video overseas, but only on VHS. So mm-hmm. uh, the fact that you have a movie that you've not released to the public, well, then again, we're so dear to my heart. Oh wait, that has a Blu-ray release on the on yeah, the, the movie club thing. Yeah, the movie club feature. I, I nearly forgot about that. How dare you put 20,000 leagues in the sea on that one? It deserves to be seen to the public. Well, um, but no, you have a feature film that's locked on the vault. You have a ride based off of it. Like I said, I don't recall much in terms of offense, but because it's connected to said movie, that becomes the question. Do you let the ride be a standalone or still keep that connection in play Mm -hmm. when you have nothing on this movie out there commercially available to the public? outside of pastime media like pal vhs tapes or japanese laser discs yeah and, and um 
like going back to my my point with what i'm saying like the ride itself i really do enjoy i think it's great but then again there's also another part of me that feels like this is a great thing that they are retheming it because i feel like this is the biggest hypocrisy that disney has done so much and that is with splash mountain the fact that they're rewriting history of the fact that they're trying their their hardest they're putting so much mm -hmm. effort into hiding song of the south to make sure no one sees it and yet they're still trying to capitalize on those characters, but with Splash Mountain, even trying mm. to change it in a way to present Br'er Rabbit and the gang as original Disney park characters that, that like Br'er Rabbit is no different than the dog with keys from Pirates or Figment and the Hitchhiking Ghost and all those characters, the way that they're, yeah. trying, to ch they're, they're trying to frame it as like that when we all know it's like one Internet search away to know that. <laughs> it's not actually it's not actually true so it does manage to solve that problem but i will say that with this announcement i am not really that crushed because i will say that it's about freaking time that they think up of an idea of a princess and the frog ride say what you will about the movie but it has so much potential on creating its own attraction especially like with the magic that they're showing uh with the characters that they have especially with uh dr facilier and his friends from the other side like there's a lot of great material that you can have in order to create something amazing in terms of a ride and using that for splash mountain i think it's a it, it's such a beautiful idea i think it's going to be great even if you think about it too the track itself opens up for a lot of possibilities even though it was an employee from the park that said oh why don't you just make it a hercules ride we just journey to the underworld to save Hera." it's like the nah, princess and the frog makes a lot of sense because of the culture and what it's mm -hmm. representing and not and just the, uh, I, I will say sorry to interrupt but not just that but also the theming in the area because technically like at disneyland for example splash mountain is actually right next to new orleans square so you could just i was about to say that's yeah. a perfect place for it because exactly. in new orleans they have the haunted mansion they have parts of the caribbean that'd be a perfect spot for it exactly and i mean like technically like their most new orleans property that they have now is the princess and the frog and especially and especially expanding on the mardi gras aspect i think it would be perfect and really emphasize um the attract like it would it really would emphasize the attraction now i will say it might be like it will be a different story with Walt Disney World because, like, technically Splash Mountain there is in Frontierland, and maybe they might have to do some retweaking on what they got to do, like, with the area at the Magic Kingdom because it will seem weird, but I, I don't know. Maybe they'll find a solution, but overall, I will say, like, I, I guess the best way to put it with all this is that my reaction towards this is a little bit like how I felt with the auction scene in Pirates of the Caribbean, where I will, like, honestly, I will absolutely... We want the ribbon! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, like, I, I will absolutely miss uh, the original attraction. I'll definitely miss uh, the original one with Br'er Rabbit and the gang. Like, that was definitely a lot of fun. I really loved it. But at the same time, I really do understand it, and I do look forward to it. And I'm sure mm. Disney will pull off something amazing with this especially with the princess and the frog theming yeah this isn't a case where they're trying to replace some of the actors and actresses who voiced mm -hmm. um non-white characters this is just them saying yeah we got a property that's more current in the mainstream let's just use that to pull potential and that's a good idea they're doing something best with it it's mm -hmm. just the timing of the, the article yeah, and, and it is more palatable with the modern times, like, especially, like, with the controversial element of Splash Mountain and how it's based mm -hmm. on Song of the South and stuff like that. But now we got something that's more culturally tasteful with the Princess and the Frog, where now, like, it's an attraction that for black people they will truly enjoy and have a ride that they could say it's for them that really like the like there it's already highly beloved the animated film of the fact that it does give um african americans their own animated feature that they can look up to these characters as their own personal heroes but now they can have like a ride equivalent of that and there is that sense of true beauty in terms of diversity at the parks and uh, mm. the, the multiculturalism element that now like even they can have something that they could deem something personal 
and that they can have something that like something they can truly cherish for them especially i just had a thought if they're putting in princess and the frog mm-hmm. where splash Mountain is you think they have a recreation of that diner from the movie Oh, that that's... would be an interesting opportunity having like a Mardi Gras themed kind of diner. Yeah, they they should, man. They should. Yeah. Because I know that technically there is a, like they did actually recreate it at the Disney Cruise Line. But that would mm. actually be a pretty cool idea if they could go and recreate that at, um, at like, oh, especially for the Magic Kingdom, actually. Like, yeah. that would be great to have like. You, you know, especially if, like, for freaking New Orleans-style food, like, get some gumbo and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it, would be, it would actually be great. I think it would be a great idea. They already missed the boat with the, the Rizzo pizza place near Muppet Vision 3D. Why not take a stab right here? There's a lot of great things you can do with this. And it just opens, it broadens the idea of what you can do with this kind of ride. Yeah, exactly. It it really does. Like now, like yeah, it, that that's why I'm so excited, and that's why I feel like it's about time that they're bringing in Princess and the Frog elements because there's so much material that you can actually work with, and so much mm. new material as well. So yeah, I will say with overall, um, we don't have any release dates though onto what's happening. We don't know when this version is going to be opening. We don't know when the final days of the Splash Mountain we have right now is going to happen, especially when uh, the parks are not opening yet and Disneyland has delayed theirs. Um, and we don't know when construction will be happening. We don't know in terms of release dates. We will have to wait and see when that will happen. Uh, but honestly, I feel pretty optimistic for this one. Again, I'm going to mm. miss the original Splash Mountain, but this is going to be quite a great welcome. And yeah, okay, I think... Uh, Let's see who else we have here. All right, anyway, so with that said, um, now it is time that we're going to go into the chat wall, and I'm going to ask you all... How do you feel about Splash Mountain officially being rethemed to The Princess and the Frog? Do you think it's a great idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Are you going to miss the original Splash Mountain? Are you going to look forward to the new Splash Mountain? Let me know what you think. So, let's see here. Oh, we got one. Yeah, might as well go with uh, James now. Uh, of course. I'm happy to be able to say that I enjoyed Splash Mountain last year, two times in a row with no lines and have the picture of evidence to prove it. And yes, I enjoyed Song of the South despite its so-called controversies. It's good to... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have a videotape recording of that movie, by the way. <laughs> and that's not a joke. That is not a joke. Dude, you're lucky. I did, some, I did some videography in my day, and someone actually wanted me to put that to a DVD, so I still have a... That is a payment from that. Yeah, yeah. It's good to know that Splash Mountain will retain its legacy internationally, but still eagerly anticipate to what Disney planned for Princess and the Frog. As you well know, I love the hell out of that movie and would like to see it get the love it deserves. Oh, yeah, that's true. Even like, yeah, especially when his first, uh, yeah, his first from Pages for Pictures, isn't it Princess and the Frog? Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is a good point. Um, I just realized the irony. They got Avatar at the theme park, too. Yeah, that <laughs> and Avatar was released the same time when that came out. Yeah, that is a good point, man. That is, a, oh my god, that is a point. Wow, that is a good point, actually. I think I think I remember seeing that uh, with Megan, who was my girlfriend at the time. We were walking out after the 3D experience. Across from us, just directly across from us, was the door to the theater showing Princess and the Frog. Oh wow! I took one good look at her, and she said, "Yeah, then we was good too." I said a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Oh, why did well. you take me <laughs> <laughs> oh wow dude uh i think that it's a bold but great move for disney that they will be relabeling splash mountain because i don't really think that children will remember where will remember where Br'er bear and all uh came from you know disney's habit of not letting go in terms of exhibiting some of their more controversial stuff like song of the south mm, yeah that's true yeah, uh, they could just remake wait what yeah, they could just remake Song of the South, maybe like a modern version instead of the tar thing. Let it be like a giant doll made out of bubble gum. It could still work. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> instead of 
punching him. He just taps him on the cheek and he gets stuck. No, That's how the whole conundrum dude, happens. Just, no, 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 no. Like, they already solved that problem in Splash Mountain, where, like, it's just a beehive. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what I was they trying to remember where the beehive came in. That, that's the thing. The beehive replaced the tar baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, my fondest memory of Song of the South being familiar to me was through three episodes of Sing Along Songs, where one song from Song of the South was each featured on the three episodes. Also, the one episode I love to laugh was reissued on DVD with the song Everybody's Got a Laughing Place. So there's more than one hour in Wonderland uh that footage from Song of the South is available on DVD. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's I forgot about the sing-along songs. Yeah, that is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm very excited for this. It's about time Princess and the Frog got some love at the Disney parks, and Disney can finally stop being so hypocritical with Song of the South. And while I will miss the ride, at least they still have it in Tokyo Disneyland and uh, pull off uh, a Tower of Terror kind of move. Also, Matt, I have a question for you. Are you going to mention this in Animation Look Back Disney Studios Plus when you talk about the Princess and the Frog? Yeah, I got hmm. time, so... It's, that's not a bad idea. I never thought of that, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll talk. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah. I will mention it. You're already uh, in the Renaissance era. It's not too far from here. Yeah, I still got I still got some time. A like, long who way to go. Like, who yeah. knows? Maybe, like, that part will be released when that ride opens. <laughs> <laughs> I still got it's a long way. It's the 2.0. Way. Yeah, I still got, like, a <laughs> long way to go, though. Uh... Now, let's see. I do like the idea that this ride takes place after the movie, so we don't have to avoid the problematic elements of the main character being frogs for most of the movie. But I do wonder how they handle the setting uh, since the bayou is uh in the movie and is pretty flat in terms of the ground uh i did also see people on twitter uh wanted this to be based on the emperor's new groove just so that big drop could be based on either the waterfall scene or you will you know pull the lever crunk uh mm-hmm. yeah there is that as well uh i oh actually they could do something emperor's new groove in like one of the water ride and one of the uh, water attractions you know someplace like yeah. a blizzard beach or typhoon lagoon like that could be, oh, that'd be a perfect spot for it yeah, definitely. Mm. Uh, they'll, 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 they'll work around the theming, but, you know. Gizmas, Potion, Pandemanium. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's see. Cool to you see. You have to ride through the water slides, collect all the potions. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, just turn it into, like, a freaking video game. <laughs> yes. Uh, the last one's a loop into a llama or something. I don't know. All right. Uh, this is an amazing idea. This is one of the best movies ever, and Louis Armstrong's cover of Zippity Doodah is immortalized in the very first African American History Museum in Washington, D.C. So win win all around. And don't forget the song Zippity Doodah was on one of Disney's sing along tapes, as well as the actual clips from the movie as well. Okay. So in a way, they Disney also, did they, they release it. Yeah. And they also play Zippity Doodah on, like, Alice in Wonderland Jr. stage production, so it's only going to bury that one. Uh, yeah, that is true. Uh, uh, the one thing I'm really curious about with the new ride, what exactly are they going to do with Naveen? Of course, this is still in the early stages, but with it being direct, uh, with it being a direct sequel of sorts, not including him would seem odd, mostly because his voice actor retired. However, I'm curious as to what they'll do with the animatronics, and I do hope this means meet and greets of Mama Odie and Charlotte maybe become <laughs> mainstream. You know, people I would love to see later. Okay. Um, no, I think, no, there are ways around it. They could find a voice actor, at least that, like, that, that seems like the realistic, uh, uh, idea. Um, also, like, well, with the animatronics, like, I guess, like, no, they will put in Naveen for sure. I mean, they're just going to be in human form. Like, like, that's going to be the main idea. Yeah, it's a sequel. Yeah. I'll go and read one. It's it's, it's not like they're going to turn into frogs again or anything. Yeah, that is true. I mean, yeah. like, like, yeah. No, the biggest yeah. question is, like, what are they going to do with Facilier? I know we talked about it a little bit, but, like, that that's the biggest thing we want to know. Like, how are they going to bring back Facilier? They have to, man. They just have they to. They killed him off in the most brutal way. They oh, dragged yeah. that guy to hell. <laughs> exactly. We need more Keith David, man. Yes, exactly. Mm. And that's one guy that needs to come back to reprise his role. We need freaking Keith David back on this. Yes. Uh, let's see. I'll read one more now. Um, let's see. Who would be it? Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. I think this one. 
Not gonna lie, I'm gonna miss Br'er Rabbit and Fox, but I acknowledge the horrible views of Song of the South, even though I associate these characters more with the ride than the movie. But it's a bit satisfying uh, to see the ride based on the most racist Disney movie be replaced with their first black princess. Also, listen, uh, listen to the podcast episode from You <laughs> Must Remember This, which uh, the person who did the podcast remember uh, talks about Song of the South and its history and even Splash Mountain. Ah, yes. That is one thing that is often mentioned is that nowadays when talking about uh, Song of the South, one thing you got to go and listen is the podcast episodes of You Must Remember This. Like she really mm. goes in depth with the history of uh, Song of the South. Yikes. Oh, yeah. No, it's no, no, no. It, it's a fascinating listen, dude. I highly recommend mm. it. So with that. Oh, do you have something to say? Sorry. What? So, no, were you about to say something? No, I don't know what you were gonna say next. Oh okay, yeah, no, I no, I was about to cap this off actually. So well, uh, that should do it for this episode seeing, of Anime Crazy. Yeah, go on. Seeing, seeing as we're into this off here, I might as well do something really quick. Um, it's nice having you on for the second show, and when I heard I was being co-hosted on, um, me and a very close friend of mine decided to some decided to say that Herb Hagen. We decided to do something very special for you. For me? Yes. Uh, as you know, I have a new title card artist named Melanie. Yes. And she specializes in doing all sorts of fan art and cool things. Mm -hmm. And uh, that kind of my heart because, well, one, she's not working in Alaska. She goes to, like a hotel and stuff, but because of COVD reasons, she's stuck up house. I've been trying to help her get through with finances. She works on my show. She does, like, art and stuff. So I figured out the kindness of my heart to chip in a little extra and have her create something special for you. Oh, okay. I'm curious. Would you like to share with the class? It's G-rated. Okay. I, uh, I wasn't asking that, Morgan. That was not the question. <laughs> so well, what is it? Did you send it to me? It's sending any minute now. All right. Hold on, folks. <laughs> we're gonna i'm sure like, it's a the... dial-up system it should kick in about now yeah oh there we go oh oh my god <laughs> <laughs> tonight on the wonderful oh waifus of Matt Ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh my god for those of you only listening it's uh <laughs> apparently morgan sent me um from his artist uh an art piece of uh arista from ariel's uh from uh, ariel's beginning oh my god wow that, that's really nice though i gotta say man yeah. thank you so much for this yes Oh wow! Really? If you like work, if you like works like that, you can follow her on her Twitter feed at Cuttlefish Colors. She has some amazing, amazing stuff. She's always open for commissions. <laughs> yeah, that that's and I mean always open for commissions. No, oh, that's definitely great. And what about you, Morgan? If uh, people want to go and follow you, where can they uh, find you? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at MovieBuffMel90. Uh, also, ironically enough, if you're tuning in, uh, there is a show that me, James, Gus, a.k.a. The Nostalgia Kid, and Cody Klusner do called The Drive-In Mutants. Uh, tonight, we are capping off Superhero Month with a riff of the 1994 cult classic The Shadow with Alec Baldwin as Mr. Banana Nose Under the Handkerchief Hero. So if you'd like to tune into that, uh, go over to twitch.tv slash at 11 p.m. Eastern. We also do like a little pre-show prior to that with some good stuff. And we're going to debut the new vaulting episode, which is on the Blues Brothers. So if you want to catch that, tune in an hour early at 10 p.m. Uh, other than that, you can find me at bitshoot.com slash vaulting, or you can follow me on my Facebook page, which is the official vaulting fan club. I'm also doing some new stuff on YouTube, too. I'm trying to get some episodes on there. Fighting copyrights from Joe of the legal department. Mm. So, doing as much as I can there. Um, other than that, that's where you can find me the most. That's all I got to say for the shameless plug-in. 
All right, that's very nice. And once again, just a little quick shout out. Also, special thanks to NeverEnding for sponsoring this episode. Don't forget to go and check out their Kickstarter. Um, they uh, Right now, they have about, um, about two weeks now, so you still have a little bit of time. So if you would like to go and uh, support their work, you can go and check, it, check them out at Kickstarter uh, <laughs> and just look up NeverEnding. So with all that said and done, I would like to say thank you all, uh, thank you all so much for listening and thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, see you later, dudes. See you in five years.